Welcome back to the I Am Nerd podcast. We are here for episode 25. We can now rent a car. We are now legally able to rent a car. Mm. And today we have our special guest who's returning immediately, Anthony Simpson. Uh, welcome back, Anthony. He's back can, for the people gotta, on Patreon. You got to audibly say hi, Ant. Yep. Oh, I was going for like a mime thing. Well, oh, well. The people on Spotify can't see you. Oh. Exactly. Uh, the Spotify, Apple they, podcast group, they... They don't know what's going on. They're just they're just like, yep. They'd figure but yeah, out. Anthony's back. He's back because his favorite character got added to Smash, Elsa from Kingdom Hearts. I am still in disbelief, and I'm a little scared that it's not real. So, like, here's the cool thing. Sora was announced for Smash, right, yesterday uh, on October 5th, and his release date is October 18th. One of my friends sent me a meme or whatever today saying that that is exactly 13 days after he was announced. Now, that was the whole know, purpose. Yes, that is clearly on purpose. He's announced as the 13th DLC character, apparently. That was all on purpose. And there's 13 spirits that are coming out with him. On purpose. Because last week, there was you read some trivia, and I was like, some of those shits are not on purpose. Yeah. But I think all of these are on purpose. Yeah, especially now that, like you said, the 13th thing has been established. Like, it's a real thing now. Yeah. But yeah, we're ready for some fucking Sora. Uh, I assume that... You lost it when you saw the reveal as well, Anthony. Um, hmm. I Uh-oh. would have under normal circumstances, but, but got spoiled was, for you. <laughs> there was a gas leak in my building when I woke up. So, oh, wow, <laughs> not exactly <laughs> the way you want to wake up. So you almost died. I mean, <laughs> so what you're saying still, is you almost died. I still watched the trailer before I went to go see about the gas. <laughs> so what you're saying is. You almost died. Don't mm. do what I did. You should probably see about a gas leak before. Yeah, you had the best Smash reaction out of all of us then. Because I didn't, yeah. I almost cried, but I didn't almost die. <laughs> <laughs> when I, I realized mid, thro- like, so before the Keyblade was fully a Keyblade, while it was still like mid throw, like strike rating, I was like, oh shit, it really is Sora. <laughs> like, so I couldn't I believe not. it. I did not, but here's the thing. Your video, you were watching it on Twitch. Your video was a little ahead of mine. Yeah, so when yeah. the Keyblade was spinning, you started screaming. And I was like, yeah. I was confused at first. I was like, I don't know what is happening. <laughs> but then it stopped. And then it quickly was like, that is a fucking kingdom key. <laughs> and then it put the Mickey, you know, the little Mickey keychain on it, which they said cost them a million dollars just to put it in there. And I was like, holy shit. I just, I mean, I lost my mind. I, I can't believe it's real. I just cannot believe that we got Sephiroth yeah. and Sora in less than a year in Smash. Yeah, they he he closed it out. Something I want to real quick on the on the front end of this podcast make clear because I haven't seen many people talk about it. Oddly enough, although not oddly enough, because people like to hate, I've heard a lot of people complain about Sora being in Smash. Yeah, there was um, a lot as of expected. It. But something that's very, very, very important to note is that Sora, Sakurai, nor Nintendo chose Sora. Uh, the people did. Yep. They they said it in the direct that Sora was actually the character that won the Smash Ballot back in Smash 4. Sora had the most votes. He's the character that won the Smash Ballot. But when it happened, Awada said to save it. Um, Sakurai didn't go into many details. But what I suspect is what I said way back when Smash 4 was still a thing. Was that if, if Goku's the most voted character, they can't necessarily get the rights for Goku. So they're right. going to put... The character with the most votes that they can get the right for in, uh, but also that they're probably going to use the Smash Ballot as wood characters to put into the next Smash game, which is true. We saw that with King K. Rool and Ridley. They they ranked very very highly in the Smash Ballot, and they were reveal characters for Smash Ultimate. Um, I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. So Sora winning the Smash Ballot. What, what that tells me is that we like they knew Sora was going to be in Smash f- this entire time. They probably also knew he was going to be the last DLC character the entire time. But yeah. that said, they had to go through the process of getting the rights from Disney or Square or whoever. So there was I no way like, he would make it in time for Smash 4. But I yeah. feel like Disney also told them that Sora can only be in the game is if he is the 13th character added. That would have been fire. <laughs> that I, been guarantee fire you, I can guarantee you Disney didn't do that. It's not about Disney. Disney doesn't give a fuck about Sora, if we're all being honest. <laughs> Damn. Do you, like, do you, okay. Drag them. Has anyone, has anyone been to Disney World lately? Is there like a guy in a Sora suit walking no, around? Not. Down on the no, there's not. Exactly. Because Disney doesn't give a shit about Sora. There's, there's They're a like, single... we own you and we're not going to do anything with you. You're going to sit there and collect The only Kingdom Hearts character at Disney is Malevol- Maleficent. Yeah, Maleficent. Yeah. I also don't think Disney owns Sora as much as people think they do. Like, I, I do, like, it's... 
I don't know. People will make it sound like Sora is solely owned by Disney, as if Square Enix isn't yeah. the one that created him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's uh, more of a Square Enix character. But it, it, the thing is, because Disney is such a titan and they've acquired yeah. pretty much everything, it's kind of a meme to just say Disney owns everything. I think that's just kind of what, what we've sure. all grown to accept. Disney has fucking purchased literally all of our I don't games. know. I'm going a, I'm to a challenge you on that. Having dealt with Disney before, they're very... They're they're nice. They're very nice. Oh, they're, 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 they're lovely. What, they're the lovely thing is to work with and <laughs> yeah, like obviously we don't them. know, but Sora <laughs> was created by Tatsuya Nomura, who was employed yeah, yeah, by yeah. Square Enix. You know what I mean? So like yeah. I'm sure I'm sure he has some ownership over his character, like because you know yeah, like well, you said, I'm sure him. he has no ownership. I think Square has ownership. No, but like to, <laughs> like, to a degree, to a degree, he probably has like an ownership over it, right? <laughs> I think Square um, is like, listen, this is our boy right here. But Disney, Disney's Disney's rough, man, and like. The things that I've that like, hmm, I'm trying to find a way to word this like sensitively. Uh, but they suck. <laughs> it's fine. The stuff, the stuff that I've worked on for Disney, it's been like they put you through some hoops. Like, yeah. just even like working on their stuff, like them yeah. sending it to you. There's like for people who don't know, Anthony, what do you do? Uh, arts and arts crafts. And crafts. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Arts and crafts for Disney. <laughs> uh, Anthony is a graphics designer of some sort. I'm not exactly sure. What I mean. Just say Arts and Crafts. It's just I don't know his that, exact title, but he does graphic Ant, design. Ant is a graphic designer. He's worked on some things. He worked it's, on that show Narcos. That's like the visual, biggest show at the top of my head. Visual effects. I'm a cool. visual effects artist. No, so VFX guy. There you go. Specifically a compositor. And there you go. For you, so I've you guys who know how to composite things. There you go. That's what I've worked on does. some some Disney some Disney properties. I forgot mm. which ones actually. He's not a fan of them. Good. And he's probably them. not allowed uh, to say. Yeah. It. So, no, I can say it now that it's out. Okay. That said, though, back to Sora and Smash. Um, the whole episode, by the way, probably might not be Sora and Smash. If there's yeah, some I don't other think topics it's gonna be. Wanna, yeah. Some other topics we wanted to touch on, but for right now, we're starting with Sora and Smash. So that said, first of all, there's a couple things I want to cover. First, let's hit his costumes. Wait, wait, before you get into that, okay. I didn't mention um, how people reacted to Sora, and I have been reading a lot of comments on Facebook and Instagram and stuff. And like you said, he's met with a lot of hate. Uh, a lot of the comments are angry Waluigi fans, uh, angry Crash Bandicoot <laughs> fans. <laughs> and I just, I don't get it. Like, I don't know. Something about going on a comment section because I didn't get my way and then fucking ranting just doesn't do yeah. it for me. People have to accept that Sora is by far. Listen, I get Crash Bandicoot is a legacy character, but he's irrelevant. I also like, don't want yeah. Crash Bandicoot. I just like, don't have any desire for Crash Bandicoot. I'm yeah. sorry. I mean, I, I mean, love I, Crash in the game, I, but he's irrelevant. Like but he's I'm not, not. I'm not after having Banjo Kazooie. After having Banjo Kazooie, I just feel like it's just kind of like yeah, that, uh, Anthony. I feel the same way. Like after Banjo, you're gonna yeah, put Crash I'm, in the game. That just seems yeah, like, like a step, just, doesn't seem like a step down. Uh, yeah, no, I agree with that. Superfluous. That's the word. It seems superfluous to yeah. have Crash after having Banjo Kazooie. But that said, I wouldn't be mad if Crash was in the game, but I would be mad if it was like, well, we were going to put Sora in, but we decided to go with Crash. <laughs> yeah. If you found because out that that was the case. No matter what anybody, I know a lot of people hate on Kingdom Hearts. We talked about it in our last episode, but. Kingdom Hearts is one of the biggest gaming franchises at, it's become. Like, it's become so huge. It's it part, is. It's part of the gaming culture. And re- he got the most votes. He is one of He's the, the most champ. popular video game characters of all time. Like, he got the most. Yeah. They had a vote, and he won. Like, yeah. Period. Now, Frazier, you said angry Waluigi fans. That First of all, saying that just sounds hilarious because <laughs> I just don't know that Waluigi has a big enough fan base to have, so, like, angry fans, right? I, I feel agree like, with that. I feel like it's become memed at the – like, it's become a meme. So people are like, oh, yeah, I'm a fan of why, why, why? That's Waluigi. exactly why, how I feel. Like, you're memeing. You, you actually don't know – what was the Waluigi's first game? Mario you know? Tennis. I mean, but how – wait, actually? Yep. I found many, this out too. How many, how many people actually me. know that though? How many no, of those no, no. angry Paddy Paddy knows that. fans know that? So here's what I'll say. Once again, I'm picking They're Sora fucking over Waluigi. Hipsters. But way before it was a meme, I always wanted Waluigi in the game since Brawl because I feel like he's I, – I, I just want the, the, all the four brothers, Mario, Luigi, Wario, Waluigi, even though they're not all actually brothers. But I would love for that quartet to be yeah, a thing. I, it does feel you know, like it's not complete, right? Yeah. like it, it feels like Wario's missing his homie, but whatever. 
Yeah. Well, anyway, fuck it. Waluigi's not in the game. Get over it. Like, I don't know what else to tell you. But the Elsa. big tragedy here is Elsa not being in the game. Yeah. yeah. No, I was pissed. Yeah. Sad. I was pissed, yo. You were pissed that Elsa couldn't let it go? Yeah. When, when, when the trailer started and there was, like, fire, like, I was like, <laughs> yes, because I knew that, I knew that Elsa was going to, like, freeze the fire out. Like, I was like, yes. As Did soon as I saw the fire. Shit? <laughs> if it would have froze Elsa. over, I would have. I would have been. Uh, I probably would have walked away from my computer. Yo, wow. You know, what if, what if there was a giant fire, right? And then you just hear like Ice Age. It's fucking. <laughs> that would be fucking random. That would be so fucking, random. That would be you know what? Too for me. If it were Alkiji or Elsa, I would honestly just have to commend. Like just choosing that level of violence. Ice time. Yes, because that Yo, is a level of violence that uh, I'm not willing to accept. The salt factory is open. People are so mad that Sora over anyone. I can only imagine if it were Elsa or if yeah. it were. <laughs> but not. But well, oddly enough, though, because I've seen this, I feel like some of the weird characters get less hate because, like, people are like, oh, but that's so cool. Because I know, weird. I hate it. I hate it. I, I'm telling you, they're hipsters. Everyone wants to be a fucking hipster. They want to have these obscure characters like Master Chief. I'm mad. You just called Master Chief obscure. Well, I'm not fucking... mad, but I think it's hilarious. I just find it ridiculous that they want, like, okay, I get it. We have Snake, right? But Master Chief, come the fuck on. Wait, people actually want a Master Chief in there? Yes. Yeah, yeah, people people were vying for Master Chief. That's interesting. They've wanted Master Chief since Smash 4, if I'm not mistaken, by the way. Hmm. Yeah. Master Chief, like, I don't know, oh, whatever. I, I, I saw, like, like the, the guy from Dark Souls floating around. Uh, yeah. I heard about that too. Yeah. I thought that was also kind of random. Like, Dark right. Souls got like, I, I I understand we have some characters in Smash that don't have names, but like I'm not for characters without names in Smash. I agree with that. If you I don't have like a name, like I, Piranha Plant, like that's cool and it's cute and it's funny that Sakura was able to make that a character. But at the same time, I'm like, it doesn't have a name. Like, that could just be Waluigi. That now that could have that's what that's what you should be mad at. Yeah, that that's not Waluigi. Fucking yeah, Piranha yeah, Plant yeah. is not a real thing. Yeah, like that's the shit. Like, if you don't have a name, it's like, what are you doing? Do you know how many Except, piranha plants there are in Mario? Like, the piranha plants not a, yeah. a fucking exclusive thing. Except like Villager. Villagers, even though I hate that character, he's so campy and corny. But yeah, but even Villager he, doesn't he, Villager he, have names? Like, aren't there a bunch of names on Villager too? Like, you can don't select you, don't not the default just, Villager, but yeah, don't you just um, like yeah the default Villager is just whatever you name him. You know what? You know what it is? Uh, we call the one that looks really high. There's a villager that, like, his eyes are real low. We call him Chillinger. And I always think that his name is actually Chillinger. <laughs> Chillinger. That's Chillinger. amazing. So, that's amazing. But that's a different rant. Uh, but, speaking of costumes, though, you were... Go ahead. Yeah. Sora's costumes. I was so happy when I saw it. So, first, it's... K I was really happy just to see it was KH1 Sora. I know... And as you, from last week, KH2, I said, was my favorite Kingdom Hearts game. I think we all said KH2 was our favorite. Yeah, I think Kingdom Hearts is, 2 is the best. It's all, yeah, it's just the best Kingdom Hearts but game. But KH1 Sora, like, I'm happy it was KH1 Sora that made it in. But that said, his other <laughs> costumes are KH2, Dream Drop, Dream Drop Distance, Kingdom Hearts 3 Sora uh, are his costumes. And then his, his next costumes are uh, Timeless River, the classic 30s Mickey Mouse costume, Valor Form, Wisdom Form. Uh, final form from Kingdom Hearts three, and uh, that's it, right? I think that's it. Yeah. Yes. Really? No master form, which was yeah. I was uh, I was gonna ask no master form because it's the only yellow fit he's got, right? Yeah. And yeah. I no think it's cool form. as shit. I actually love master form. Master form is also my favorite form in Kingdom Hearts two. Like I don't. I was. Them, I, I was done surprised. Yeah. yeah. I will say though, I'm I'm happy that they made him like floaty ish. You know, like yes. so, like I. I guess I guess everyone was, was expecting that if Sora made it into Smash, he would just kind of be like a rip straight out of Kingdom Hearts 2. Because he's like the fastest, like most he's like the sharpest in his motion, right? But like Kingdom Hearts 1 Sora is like a little more floaty, a little hey, more. Wait, dude, I love the oh. janky cage one jump he has. Like his yeah. legs are wide open. Like that janky ass jump. Yeah. yeah his legs more, are so wide open. It's like he uses his nowhere. pants as a parachute. It's yeah. the clown jump with the clown shoes. Yeah. Also, like he's a super lightweight character, and I like Sakurai said, like he's not lightweight because he actually weight, like he's because he's actually lightweight. He's lightweight in spirit. 
Like he was, <laughs> he was saying like Sora's personality is what makes him lightweight. Uh huh. That's a whole fucking rant. They knew that they gave him pretty much the best recovery in the entire game, next to probably Mr. Game and Watch. Yo, his recovery is insane. Oh, it's wild. Yeah. He's got Pikachu's recovery and Link's recovery. Yeah, like, what yeah. The fuck? And it's better yeah. than Link's recovery too because it's fat. Yo, it actually just is. Yeah, like if you look at it, it looks like it just has a better frame data. I would say than Link's. Also. When I saw him have Sonic Rave, like that's yeah. that's the MVP move. If anybody watched any of my playthroughs of Kingdom Hearts, <laughs> specifically Chain of Memories and Kingdom Hearts 2, Sonic Rave is the MVP move. That move ends fucking fights. It it's is also so unfair, unfair as fuck because you get iframes with that move. Yep. That oh, move is yeah. so good. That's always been super abusable. No matter how hard the boss is, Sonic Rave will get you through so much. Sonic just, Grable just on the show. They they did my boy Link dirty again. And as a Link main, it's all right. Dang. What do you mean? You got three links in a game. Ah, uh, stop. <laughs> you got three links. You got Toon, three. Toon Link, Toon Link, and Young Link are way different than regular Link. You yeah, I never, I never use Toon Link. So you regular. have choices. How many people no, can say they have choices? Stop, 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 stop. How many people? Just, uh, it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel the same. They all feel way different. Mm. So sure, I'm gonna but, sit here and say that all three of them are the same. What are uh, no, no, we're not. That's the thing. They're not the same. That's the good part, though. You get to choose. You get your I'm Wind a, Waker. I want to so back on. Uh, you guys are ranting about Link. I'm, I'm cutting y'all off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but back on Sora on his special moves. What do you got? Like I like. Oh, oh, hold on. Before actually, no, we'll do a special moves. I really like the fact that I sent this in the video, but I like the fact that his three main spells are all on the same button. That way they weren't clogging up his other buttons. Like yeah. Baraga, Blizzaga, and Thundaga are all on neutral B and they cycle. And I like that because I think a lot of people, when they concept design Sora and Smash, they just assume like side B will be Blizzard, you know, neutral B will be fire, down B will be thunder or something like that. Yeah. Um, and so I like the fact that they, instead of clogging up all of his B moves with his spells, they put them on a cycle. For there, there's B. one thing that I was really hoping for. So if they were going to give him a counter down B, obviously we talked about this, but I wanted it to be Reflecta. Bro, you just took the words right out of my mouth. Like, I just that, wanted like, it. Yeah. Missed opportunity there. I see why they missed. didn't. I see why they didn't, because I actually kind of like the way that his counter yeah. functions. Yes. It's cool. Well, also, it should have been Reflect. <laughs> they also, like, they made him, it's cage one Sora, so. Yeah, he doesn't yeah. have a fucking And, like, I mean, that is what Guard does in Kingdom Hearts 1, right? Because he, like, holds up the Keyblade like that, and you can, like, yeah. ref- knock Which, people off balance. I didn't know that for a long time, and Me I just too. didn't use Guard. Like, my first playthrough of Kingdom Hearts 1 when I was, like, 8 Me or however old I was. Too. I just didn't know. And... I don't think I knew how valuable Guard was until the Ice Titan same yeah no. it wasn't in, and i was just like i can't beat this bitch yeah and then i don't know what like what dawned on me to use guard but i did and i was like oh this move's busted guard <laughs> is so good is I'm, I'm just happy that in future games it became a, a default move in his move set because in cage one you have to equip it which is weird like yeah. i just think it's, it should just be part like of his normal controls so but, like that's why i didn't use, use it. it yeah yeah right. same frazier me frazier got the same script yeah no we we live the same life apparently <laughs> like we're all here just saying the same shit <laughs> oh god but yeah the fact that you had to equip it i was like i'm not fucking equipping guard what do I look like? Yeah. Who needs the guard? I'm I'm, I'm strong. Fuck is this? <laughs> I'm strong. Also, dodge roll, especially when you're a noob. Dodge roll is so good. Oh yeah. yeah. You don't know. You just you just dodge roll and everything. You just spam it. You just spam you it. Just spam it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, his special side B Sonic Rave is an absurd recovery. It looks like it'll be really fun in combos. His fire Aga, you can keep firing it. it. Looks like infinitely too. Yeah. Which makes sense because that's what you you know you can. Yeah, I you was can... actually. Okay, I guess here's the effect it had. I ended up like watching all of the Kingdom Hearts openings yesterday, and I ended up playing Kingdom Hearts three a little bit yesterday. Yeah. So, yes, you did. I was like, uh, yes, you did. I, when I saw that, I I immediately felt the jive too. I was like, dude, I want to play some Kingdom Hearts. I, yeah, um, I actually you can ask uh, Gary. I blasted all of the Kingdom Hearts openings last night while I was just trying on clothes. Good shit. <laughs> Good shit, dude. But yeah, so you can spam B and he'll keep shooting Faraga. But as soon as you stop, is it'll switch to Thundaga, mm-hmm. and then Blizzard is the last one, which I thought Thundaga? was weird. Go ahead. I thought it was weird that it went Fire Thunder Blizzard and not Fire Blizzard Thunder, but it's whatever. Yeah, it it kind of mixes it up too because 
uh, the way he shoots the blizzard and the fire spells is Are similar. Way, yeah, it's the similar way he shoots it. Yeah. Thunder is the oddball, so they kind of put it in the middle. Is That's my logic anyway. Yeah. And Thunder seems like the scariest one, if we're being honest, right? Like that, Yes. Thunder yes. is the one that I feel like is problematic. Because I imagine you standing at the edge, and someone is about to recover, and you just cast Undaga, and that shit goes out so far. Especially because you're standing, right? It has a different yeah. distance than you're standing if you're in the air. So... Thundaga's I think gonna be gonna be, special. Yeah, I think Thundaga. I'm hope I'm hoping that his frame data, because I know he's kind of like um, Sakurai mentioned that he has kind of like a laggy thing to him, where his moves don't come out the quickest per se. Yeah. So I'm hoping that he still has good frame data despite some of that. And I hope it, so. Yeah. His, and if, uh, his 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 dare it gives me hope that he's got some pretty good. Frame his data. dare. Oh his my dare god. Is pretty good. His dare looks like it's so good. I, yeah. I think that might be one of his best moves. Yeah, yeah. Like that, that was Kingdom Hearts 2-esque. His dare is kind of nutty. But because you, my... you can recover from anywhere. So when you dare, there's no actual... You're not putting yourself in danger daring. Yeah. yeah. When I saw they gave him... Like, he is... Like, he's an air boy. Like, he can up B and then side B. Like, he's not... He doesn't go in the free fall. He ain't worried about any of that Doesn't shit. Doesn't one of his moves, like, knock them into the air, too? Like, it... Um... I mean, of course, several moves probably knock people in the air, but like, yeah, his like, down tilt does. Yeah, yeah, okay. Sakurai blatantly said that Rap down does. tilt puts sends your opponent. La- they it launches your opponent like this, and I'm sure you guys will figure out how to use this. Yeah, yeah, yep. <laughs> yeah. And dude, that so going into that, my absolute favorite thing on the character is by far the way his jab slash f tilt forward air and air and nair works. Yeah. Basically kind of similar to Mega Man in an odd way. Mega Man's jab is that he shoots the pellets, and he can also shoot the pellets with his forward air, with his forward air, his uh, forward right. tilt, and his nair. He just shoots the pellets, he can move around shooting the pellets. Sora's um, nair, forward air, forward tilt, and jab all are a keyblade combo. Uh, yeah. but they, they're slightly different combos, but if, if you press A and press A two more times, he'll do a three-hit combo, or if you do the forward... Uh, the forward tilt and two more A's. He'll do a three a combo. Same with his aerial versions. Uh, and I like that, at least according to the trailer and the 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 presents, it sounds like he sort of has that that weird thing in, in Kingdom Hearts where if you're in the middle of doing an air combo, you won't touch the ground. So like if let's say you do short hop fair, you can do short hop fair and do the whole air combo and he'll kind of float right above the ground. Uh, he okay. won't touch the ground until he finishes the air combo, which yeah. I think is really cool. Also, notice that you can just do a forward tilt, I think, and it will just be a stronger knockback move if you don't can follow it up. Yep, yep, yeah. You can just do normal forward tilt, or you can do uh, the combo forward tilt. So and one of the things I'm I really love that he is, has that. Same, I love that because when people are at like 140, if you just forward tilt them and want them dead, I'm hoping that it kills you. Yeah, uh, I, was, I just love how it feels so Kingdom Heartsy. Like I love yeah. that. He feels like Sora can do his like his his three hit Kingdom Hearts combo. Like yeah. I, I don't, it just it feels really nice. I love that down smash is like a the finisher one of the finishers the one where he bounces on it. Yeah, I think that's stun impact. Yeah, his yeah. down smash is stun impact. His up smash is something that is just like not necessarily. I, it's not really a move, but like it's apparently it's a strong ass up smash in Smash Bros. So yeah, his up smash is just like light. Yeah, they said it's <laughs> laggy, but it hits really hard if you're in the center of it, and it's hard to dodge. I'm I I hope that he's good. Like I have high hopes that he's actually a, a good character that he won't just be because they made him super light, right? They showed that he is lighter than Isabel, which is crazy. It is really crazy to me. Damn, so really? Like, yeah, yeah, they made they showed That's... him on that scale, the scales on that one uh, Yoshi or Mario stage. I mean, he can fly, so yeah. They said he's the king of the sky, but like. I guess I'm guessing the whole point is Sora can recover from anywhere. So if you do not kill Sora in the blast zone, he will always come back. He will never die from just like SDing or um, I don't know, getting knocked too far back and like, oh, I can't recover. Like that's not a thing. That will never be a thing. No, also, not. also his double jump is probably up there with the highest in the game, which is Falco. Yeah, his double jump is big. His double jump reminds me of Kazuya's double jump. It's okay. really similar to the way Kazuya's double Floaty jump and high. work. Yeah. yeah. I get you. Yeah, it goes really high. I want to compare it to Falco's, uh, even though Falco jumps fast and high. But I want to see how crazy his his actual, like how high he gets. What else is there? So as you said, like his side B is one of the best moves, I think, in the game. It's pretty much quick attack. 
but like buffed. Well, <laughs> I guess in some ways it's buffed, and probably in some ways it's nerfed. Quick attack seems faster in general. Yeah, but I don't. It know also can... covers more distance. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, but I don't know if quick attack has ever been used to like really edge guard people the way strike rate can. Like, yeah, dude. <laughs> or not not great. Sorry, dude. It the way he. The way you can use it, like go off stage and just like Sonic Rave somebody and it homes in like Sonic homing attack. Yes. And then you just up be back. Yeah, like it people don't go so off the crazy. stage because because if you do that with Pikachu, you will die because you will yeah. go into free fall. But Sora doesn't go into free fall from any move. No, he does not. Right? He, that like, man not, wait, not even not even his recovery. No, no, no. he can up B and then side B. That Sora who, does not go into free fall. Who thought that was okay? I don't Sora think Sora can, has free fall. Because right? I don't think he has free fall because Ant. It's like cause his up B is um is rising slash. And right you know, rising slash wow. is like, so like a rising they made slash it, sort of, yeah. I they see. made it so that like cause in Kingdom Hearts, you know, Sora doesn't go in the free like it's interesting. They made it so that he he kind of plays like a Kingdom Hearts <laughs> character, which is fucking cool. Oh yeah, yeah I'm I don't think at Sora it now, has yeah. free fall at all. It's like it's way, meant to be a potential combo starter, right? Yeah. That's, yeah. The same way uh what's the game we watch, I don't think has free fall either. Fuck that pretty, Nobody cares. Pretty, yeah, we'll get that guy out of here. <laughs> all, I'm, all I'm saying is that there are there's a precedent for characters not going into free fall, yeah. like Sonic. So, Sonic, yes, have free fall. Sonic doesn't fucking go into free fall. So annoying. Yeah, that character is toxic as hell. But yeah, Sora seems really good. He's a sorty. He so he has that whole you know good good space. He's an axie. Fall. I've been arguing with people all day. The keyblade's an axe. You can fuck off. That's what you can do. <laughs> the keyblade is not. An, it is not an axe. You can fuck off. It's an is this the pop tart is a ravioli thing all over again? Look at it. That shit ain't <laughs> a, a sword. It's an axe. No, <laughs> the keyblade. You know, I wasn't there for that, but I can see Kenny saying that a pop tart is a ravioli. Yeah, I never I said that. for it, but I can I can see. Okay, all right. I never <laughs> said that. All right. <laughs> he assumed that because you're Italian that you thought that. Damn. <laughs> so, yes. did y'all see how fucking amazing his stage is? The oh, hollow fashion stage, stage the best in the game. turns into dive in the heart. Yeah, one of the best in the game. Oh, did you see the fucking? Okay, so when uh, the one stained glass is Sora, I believe, or whoever, let's say Riku, uh, Donald and Goofy are not. Yeah, yeah there. they're not there. Donald and Goofy aren't on the stained glass. They were like, uh, absolutely not. Yeah, <laughs> Donald and Goofy are not there. Like, but that's what I'm saying. Sora. I don't think <clears throat> that's my point in that. Like, I don't think. I don't it's think Disney. Disney. I don't think Disney had as much control as people claim they do because I, I just don't think. I think most of the negotiations went through Square, and yeah. But the only thing they got to get from Disney really is the Mickey logo on the Kingdom key. Like other than that, like they don't. They so don't then, why do you it. think? Why do you think Donald and Goofy aren't on the? Aren't on They're the not show? there because they didn't do deal because they, they didn't do a deal with Disney. That's why Donald and Goofy aren't there. Like they, you're thinking they went more through Square. Mm -hmm. They went through Square. Yeah. Maybe. Like, because for Donald Goofy to be there, they would have had to do the deal specifically with Disney, and I think they more so went through Square. Is, yeah, my, really. is my thinking. I'm, I'm thinking. I'm thinking that Disney would just like you can have Sora, and that's it. Yes, I I got a very much that vibe. That I could see world. not because I could see Disney wanting to promote their guys. Like you got if you put Sora in, you can, but you he know, has to come with a thirty minute short of Donald Duck and Goofy dancing. You would in think the wind. that. You would think that, but. Tarzan's not in any other game except for Kingdom Hearts 1. And yeah, but that's not Disney's know. fault. I know, I know, I know. But, like, what does the Tarzan estate benefit from not having, uh, like, what, what else? Yeah, what else like, are they why doing? would they not? Like, what else are they doing? They're not, re like, Tarzan isn't relevant at, at all. Like, why not license Tarzan. him out and make money off of him? Yeah, seriously. So, yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to pretend like I know licensing and contracts People, and things like that. People with money make wild decisions, wildly. Yeah, because after a certain point, it's not about the money. I mean, the same. I'm going to do a little aside here, but like in Yu Gi Oh!, one of the biggest complaints is that the creator, Kazuki Takahashi, he doesn't believe, I guess, or like doesn't want uh, competitive prizing for the game. It's like his wish. So, unfortunately, for the Yu Gi Oh! community, we don't have real prizing, and it seems like we never will. Like, there will never be cash prizing, apparently. They, we will never have a million dollar Yu Gi Oh! tournament. Uh, Man, which, which for y'all, you said what? 
No squid games for y'all. Yeah, no squid game for us. So it kind of, and it would be a squid game if they put a million dollar prize support out there. Like that <laughs> shit. There will be blood. <laughs> you want to see who I really am? Give me a million dollar prize as first. It's just like, I'll actually send you to the shadow realm. <laughs> yeah, like actually, factually. I'll fucking square triangle circle the fuck out of everybody. Oh, shit. Damn. <laughs> L-R-A start their life. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you guys think about, because uh, we talked about the, the music a lot. And when we talked about Kingdom Hearts, so what do you guys think about the the song track list? So fuck fuck them immediately for making dearly beloved. You have to have save data from that melody and memory game. Yeah, that's not fuck. that's not okay. But. That's so corny. So I'm gonna have to fucking get some Damn. some save data from somewhere. I don't even know how save data transfers work on Nintendo Switch when like it's not your account or what. I don't even know. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna all find gotta, a way. All you gotta do is boot the game one time. Yeah, I'll, I'll just. But like, we games. don't have. Does the Switch take cartridges or anything? Yeah. You know, I've never, because I've only, okay. Wait, so I'm, was that a real question? Yeah, I I'm have. Des- <laughs> I'm dead serious. I'm being dead serious. So I don't, I have not bought a physical game in the last, it might be five years. I'm not even kidding. Every you know, that's I've, fair. Every game I've bought for every system I own has been a digital download because I just do not, I'm not, I'm just not a fan of uh, physically owning things anymore as far as like games go. Like I know some people like to collect and that's fine. Like no, no problems with that whatsoever. I get it. I just have really bad experiences with buying physical games. Uh, usually they ship after everyone else is fucking playing it. Like when I bought Kingdom Hearts 3, I was going to buy the collector's edition. And then I realized that that shit was going to ship on a day that it comes out. And I was like, nope, 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 nope. nope, nope, nope. I need to play it at 12 got, o'clock. Fraser got fucked with oh, Monster, Monster Hunter Rise. Terrible. With Monster Hunter Rise, super fucked. I ordered the collector's edition Nintendo Switch Monster Hunter Rise for $450. And it was supposed to arrive to my house the day Monster Hunter Rise was allowed to be played and sold. And instead of it coming, they were like, oh, it's going to take another like three weeks to come, which is wild. What the fuck? Like, imagine if Breath of the Wild dropped, Anthony. They were like, oh, your special edition Switch is not coming for three weeks. <laughs> oh, man. I- I'd fight. I'd yeah. Fight people. To so be fair, complain. that did happen to me. Uh, we, we sure. ordered we ordered a Nintendo Switch. It was supposed to be here, blah blah blah, and it just the Am- basically the guy that worked at the Amazon delivery guy stole it. Is what happened because that shit just <laughs> never appeared. It, yeah. it just never appeared, and we had to it find was, it at Toys R Us. That shit got stolen. That it said, was one of those like it got your package was delivered, and there is yeah, nothing. and it was just it just <laughs> was not delivered. That said, uh, I'm putting up to the camera right now my physical cartridge. You can't really tell. Of Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory. So okay. me and Fraser, we can just hang out at some point and I can just plug this in yes. my Switch. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate you for having a physical game because I don't own any. Like my Switch, even the games that I do, like I own Smash Bros. I own a Monster on the Rise. I don't I don't have any physical copies of them. So No, I feel that. Because with the Switch, yeah. with the Switch especially, I'm just like I think I've got maybe like three or four physical yeah. games. And they were all like collector's editions, you know. Yes. Like, like Octopath Travel, I got collector's edition. So like I feel Wild, like that's collector's edition. You know, like I feel like that's kind of the point too. Is that you want, if you're gonna have a physical copy of a game, it probably should be something collector's edition. In my in my head, like to me personally. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, so here's the, here's the list. That's that's everything be like. I just you sent know. you guys the song list. Those are the nine songs, not including um, "Dearly Beloved," that are going to be in Kingdom and Smash Ultimate. All right, so let's see here. We got Night of Fate Classic. Destiny's Force? I can't remember what that one sounds like. Okay, how, how about this? I'm going to actually play. I want to I hear some of these. I'm not going to play them like out loud, but I want to hear. Yeah. Hand in Hand is a classic. Hand in Hand, classic. Uh, Shrouding Dark Cloud, classic. Gummy Ship Music, classic. Hollow Bastion, of course. Amazing. We were talking Yo, about that. Destiny's Force, Anthony? Is crazy. I'm, I have to remember what it sounds like. Please, I, I, I know it. I just right like. Force. Oh, see. fighting to Destiny's Force, Kenny is going to be nuts. My absolute favorite song here, I think, is uh, I can never pronounce it, but it's the Latin one. Oh, uh, Charzo de Note. Yeah, I, I don't. That, I don't think I said that right. By the uh, way, okay. Destiny's Force is the boss music from Kingdom Hearts One. Yes, right. fighting oh. fighting to that music is going to be epic as yeah, hell. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to play the Charzo right. one now. That one, if, if it's the one I think it is, I love that song. What Scarso de not? Yeah, if it's the one I think it is, that song is. Yeah, that's the uh, the Hollow Bastion battle music, which is you know, yeah. Wow, I can't imagine 
okay, fighting to this is gonna be amazing. I, this, <laughs> this sounds so fucking good. This sounds so good. Yeah, they've got they've got fire. They got some fire uh, tracks on here. I've been talking about Destati for like ages. And Fragments of Sorrow, of course, another class. I mean, all the ones that they chose were great. Are great songs, yeah. I do. I would have loved like a little more Kingdom more. Hearts too. Yeah, like um, uh, what? I would just love more in general. Like my boy Terry Bogard got fifty songs. Yo, SNK was wild. <laughs> SNK so, was wild. <laughs> is it also true that all the songs in the, that we have are they all KH one songs? Yes. I yeah, except maybe yeah, is the Gummy Ship two? Is that? I feel like Gummy Ship two. Or I, I feel I feel like that's just probably the music that plays when you go to yeah. Like, they're the all batch of worlds. I can say for sure they're all KH one songs. The only one except Gummy Ship two. I don't know. Just because it's called Gummy Ship Two, I I don't know. Yeah, but so all the other ones are King, King, King because King. if they got Kingdom Hearts Two music, oh my god! Yeah, I, like I wish there was like some tension rising or like the struggle of the the thirteen yeah, yeah, struggle. Yeah. You know, yeah. like the uh, thirteen struggle nice. is crazy. Yeah, some of those would have been nice. Them yeah. and Vigor, oh my god! Them and Vigor is another good one. I mean, pretty much. Just put the just put Melody of Memories on it. Just put the whole just the yeah. Whole put song. all the Melody of Memory in the game. <laughs> Like, why not? Why not? Is there. Yeah, I like how the, they were like, yeah, we didn't go with any Disney songs. It's like, yeah, no shit. <laughs> I would probably lose every single one of my matches, honestly, if Vim and Vigor was a fighting song. Nah, you'd be pumped. You'd be pumped I, up. Dog, I would not be able to concentrate because I would be sitting there humming the fucking beat, and that just takes like half of my concentration. <laughs> it's weird. I, like, I, I remember all of the music when I hear it, but I don't remember all of you the You know music. what they should do? They won't do, but they should do. For all the Square Enix characters, for Hero... Cloud Sephiroth and Sora, they should make all of their songs playable on all of their stages. Like you should be able to listen to I, Kingdom Hearts music on the Midgar stage and shit. So you maybe you understand this. Play. Maybe you understand this a bit better than I do, Kenny. How does playing music work in Smash Bros? Like, how does it work? You can go to your settings and pick what songs play at what frequency on like every stage. And as far as I know, basically, uh, if it's a Mario stage. Any of the Mario music in the game can be played on that. So okay, yeah. So whatever it is, so all of the Zelda stages can play all of the Zelda music. So um, is that to say that? Because what about stages like Final Destination? I've heard weird so songs on Final, Final Destination. Final Destination. So the Smash stages, the stages that are Smash Bros. stages, Final Destination, Battlefield, Small Battlefield, they can play any song in the game, I believe. Okay. So I will want to fight on those stages more often then because I want to hear a lot of Kingdom Hearts music as I fight. And I also want to hear Final Fantasy VII music as I fight. Yeah, they can uh yeah, they, Wait, as far there, as I remember there they only played. one Final Fantasy VII track? No, there's no, a lot. No, no, they add it more when Sephiroth was at it. Oh, okay, that's cool. Yo, it's they actually added, hilarious. I completely just like ignored all of the DLC characters. Because I was like, uh, I think I'm kind of done with Smash, right? Yeah. And now I'm like, shit. Now you're going to buy them all. Buy all of them. Yep. Yeah. That's exciting, <laughs> like, though. Shit. Look, what Nintendo got their money for me uh, when I I decided that I wanted to buy the real game to be able to play online. Uh, don't, don't ask why I did that, because the online play is not there. But mm -hmm. I still did it because I play Smash a lot. I also follow a lot of the content. I like what I watch every tournament pretty much for Smash on the weekends. And I was like, you know, let me let me actually support them with my money because I genuinely do like Smash Bros. I like when Nintendo is done. I like that they've created Mugen for real, like a real licensed Mugen where there won't be lawsuits. And speaking of supporting things, how about you guys support us on our Patreon over at I Am Their Podcast where you can get access to exclusive content like an extra episode. Also, you guys are allowed to play us in Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, and we might even add that you can play us in Smash Bros. But yeah, fucking, shameless plug. Fucking bravo transition. <laughs> <laughs> fucking bravo transition <laughs> holy shit i'm half kidding but i'm also like you know we we could use all support so i'm not I, half kidding i appreciate it <laughs> we have look, we have 10 patrons and i'm fucking excited because we've been podcasting for two months and the fact that 10 people are helping us out with this <laughs> and supporting the channel is amazing that's so, true. That's true. Half you guys, kidding, but also half dead ass serious. Slowly but surely, it's thanks to you that I'm my walls will get fixed. Yep. <laughs> yep. And, and Kenny's gonna get a green screen soon. We're in a, right now. Oh, don't give him. A, don't you can't give Kenny that much power. Don't give him a green screen. Oh, he's. I can't. I wait, was, Kenny's gonna be such a creative. I was gonna, gonna be... have a green screen 
pretty much around when my my walls got destroyed with water damage. Around that time, I was getting ready to buy a green screen, and then, and then all that happened, walls. and I had to completely change where I'm at. And where I'm at right now, I don't know if you can tell, but literally, like, I can touch the wall behind, like this yes. room. I can touch the the opposite walls <laughs> by standing that way. So, like, there's oh. nowhere to put a green screen in here. It's not basically in a closet. Just, if you guys are basically yeah. in a New York City apartment. Yes. Yeah. He's in a, yeah. he's in a chic New York City loft. Chic. <laughs> <laughs> It's all the rage. He pays three thousand a month. Oh, Holy shit! Plus utilities. Oh my <laughs> Jesus. God. That's right. Oh. I'll pay all of that. Uh, and I and I gotta walk the the landlord's dog. <laughs> <laughs> and walk the walk landlord's the, kid sometimes. Yeah, you gotta no, you walk guys the give, landlord's You guys dog. give Kenny a green screen. You, you're gonna turn on the podcast one day, and he's gonna be a floating head. What'd you say? Oh. And you've been cutting. You're cutting out again. Uh, my my net is just. I think my net is shitting the bed. But I think I said mic you, is shit in the bed. Yeah, I think your mic is shit in the bed. 100. Uh, no, I said you guys. Uh, you guys give Kenny a green screen. You're gonna turn on the podcast one day. He's gonna be a floating head. Oh, yeah. I can't you wait for him. Right, I you damn right, wait. I will be. You fucking right. I cannot wait. Can I'll he's, wear getting, a... uh, he's getting I'll fit wear too. Head. I can see it. I can see your fucking. I've been running every day. Well, not every day. That's wrong. Every other day. Yeah. I went. I went running today. Dog. Fuck the gnats. All right, the gnats that are just <laughs> flying around in the Yo, world. Yo, when you run through a horde of gnats, it's wild. Bruh. When I was done running, first of all, I promise you, I swallowed 300 gnats. Like, oh, I easily. murdered a family. It's a and, and, <laughs> You swallowed the family. Yes. But when I got home and, like, I was cooling down, I looked at my arms. There was no less on just one arm. There was no less than, like, 15 dead gnats Ew. that must have just been in the way of, like, my stride yeah just died on impact and they got caught we, by the wind scars of running as we fucking running through them i had like 15 dead gnats per arm i had them on my neck and shit just i was covered in dead gnats just running through them yeah, luckily that's in october that's kind of crazy dude there's there are there are more gnats than i was going to make a joke that i can't make because i'll get canceled but there's a lot of gnats <laughs> Whoa! I wonder, I I wonder what, what that choke was gonna be. I don't know where that was about to go. <laughs> Spoiler alert: Anthony <laughs> and I are both black. I have no idea. No, it had was. nothing to do with that. Oh, okay. Uh, no, we just, uh, no, I just it, it really didn't. Out. Trust me. Okay. I, I can't <laughs> even give you a hint what it had to do with because it's that bad. It yeah, it has nothing to do with anything obvious. Like you wouldn't be able to figure okay. it out. It would be a yeah. pity. Yeah. You, yeah, you wouldn't be able to figure it out. Like yeah. it, it's it was a, it was really random. It was a rant. But yeah, I hate hordes of gnats. Sometimes I fucking I'm just walking and you'll just see like this weird silhouette in the distance. Like, what is that? Yeah. It's awful. <laughs> and it's just gnats. Shit, it's I haven't awful. seen them. I haven't seen a gnat in a while. I mean, I guess we don't have gnats that's, in Brooklyn. That's because like in New York, like they probably can't <laughs> live through the smog. No, yeah, that, that's like, fair. That's fair. Yeah, you guys, the natural air there kills them. Good. Uh, like when yo, when Pokemon Go was out, the everybody went to New York to catch Grimer, coughing. Like that's that's where they caught them. That's fair. It's a pretty filthy, it's a pretty filthy place. Crimers and coughings. I'll say the first when I first moved to New York, I was sick for at least two months. That was my body acclimating. Damn. So that's awful. Damn. That is all right. Well, let's transition over to I don't know if you guys know, but that Nintendo, I keep saying fucking Nintendo. Nickelodeon All Stars Brawl is officially out, I think. Yeah, the Nickelodeon Smash game. Oh, yeah, that's that's a real thing, isn't it? It is a real thing. And I've been watching gameplay. It has rollback netcode, baby. So I've been watching gameplay for it and Okay, a couple of things. The game is really fast. Uh, according to Left End, it's faster than Melee. And what? Y- yes, it's it's faster. He said it's the fastest fighting game he's ever played. So that is just oh, buy, just go right there. Um, it has you know it has wave dashing, like auto canceling, and zero to deaths. There's a couple zero to deaths apparently. SpongeBob can do one. Uh, someone else can do one. The game is very fucking broken. That is the consensus between pretty much every top fighting game player that I've seen so far is that you can pretty much do anything and in like a, so, some things are just broken. Like they're in just a bad not way or a good way broken. in a bad way for like in a competitive way. It's it's bad. It, it's kind of one of those things mm-hmm. like one hit and you're dead a lot of the time or like one hit and you are just absolutely bodied. Like, yeah. for example, Hungry Box is playing against Armada. 
and he was showing he was like this is unreactable once i'm hit with this one move by this character i think uh Ol olgina olgina uh, oh, Blina. Oh, oh, Blina. I'm looking at it now. Yeah, she's monsters. Ah, no. real monsters. Yeah. So there's a video of those two playing. Armada's playing Hungry Box today. They were just posted today, and it's Oblina versus uh, Nigel. Reptar and Damn. Nigel. Yeah, he, he, no, oh, Reptar's he right in the game. That's pretty cool. And I don't want yeah. to. Yeah, yeah, because Rep... Nigel has rest. And I was like, the Hungry Box yeah. is picking Nigel. Uh, basically, the whole video, the whole ten minutes, is just Armada hitting. Him off the stage one time and then down airing him four times and then recovering with Oblina. Jesus, her down air is so fast and unreactable. There's nothing you can do. He was like showing like you can't do anything about this. He said no matter how I di, no matter what I had, like no matter what moves. Oh, I'm looking at do. it now. I'm looking at this trailer now. Fucking Reptar bodied SpongeBob. Like he just hit him and he fucking flew like yeah. halfway across the screen. The combos yeah. are really crazy. I mean the game. Like I haven't played it yet, but I've been watching it a lot over these last two days because they people have promotional copies of the game as well. Um, yeah. So they've had it for a bit, and right now there's like a tier list out that's saying that Ang is really ridiculous. Uh, what's the Aang what's look the, ridiculous? What's the Ninja Turtle who has the swords? Leonardo. Leonardo. Leonardo's apparently tier S S tier, and there was one other person I forget, but yeah, basically Leonardo and. And Ang look ridiculous. Oh, the girl with the camera. I forget. She has a regular ass name. Like a regular... oh, April O'Neil. April O'Neil is apparently S tier as well. Yeah, I um I've been looking at that game. I'm actually really excited for it. I didn't get it yet <laughs> just because my current situation, I, I just know that I won't really have time to play it. Yeah. Um, but I'm hundred percent getting it. I'm probably just gonna get it on sale. Your cousin uh, is playing it right now. Like Stango is literally we had him on a podcast previously because he's one of the top Smash players. Uh you know how Discord, I guess. It's really Steam. I got a notification when we started the podcast that Stengo was playing Nickelodeon yeah. you know, All-Stars Brawl. I definitely want to play it. I'm just I think that game's going to go on sale pretty quickly. Just looks like a game that'll go on sale. Is that real? And I hope I hope you're right about that because I'm not buying I don't know what it well, what does it cost? Let me let me ask that first before I say what I'm not gonna do. I don't know what it costs. I don't I have no I idea what it costs. I'm gonna look it up real quick. I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna look it up. But real quick. While you look it up, I'm probably I, I could get it right now, but the reason why I'm not is because a, I'm I don't I'm not in my usual setup, and I'm not really in the situation to kind of stream whatever game I want, unfortunately. But um, and on B, I've been really occupied with a bunch of other shit. Like, I'm 100% in Pokemon Red, Blue, Yellow. I'm on 100% Gold, Silver, Crystal, and I want to be streaming that. I haven't been streaming it lately just because I haven't had the time to. But I'm gonna be streaming like 100%ing those games and Pokemon LOL, Stadium on One and Two. Uh, <laughs> LOL, how much LOL. percent? Uh, twenty percent off. It's at so it's forty dollars on sale. It's originally fifty dollar game. Twenty mm, percent off. It'll go down more because they they need people to play the game. So it will. I think I think you're right. I think it will go on sale even more. Yeah. So I uh, I'm gonna definitely pick it up because I'm actually big hype for the game. But right now I don't really have the time to play it anyway. So I'm not I'm not gonna do the thing where I'm gonna buy the game and then not play it for six months and then six months later I'm going to play it a lot. But six and months later, it's the on price sale. will have yeah, the price will have dropped yeah. to like twenty five dollars, and it's like damn, I could have saved myself. 15 so months. I know I can't play it now. I know I will be playing it in like six months or so. So I'll just wait to see what the price is. Then. If you play in a six months, that game is going to be super figured out. I'm good with it. I know it's going to be a patch. I heard one of the developers talking about how like yeah, we know <laughs> the game's broken, and like yeah, we don't care. We, yeah, we, we want the game to be broken, and we'll balance it. We'll balance it when we need to, but like the game just came out, let it be broken. Like, yeah, I feel the same way. Like I, I, hmm. I mean, we knew from the onset that the game was going to be broken as soon as we saw wave dashing. Because if you put wave, if you if you took the time to put wave dashing in a game, and then also everyone has an air dash, then you wanted it to be a pretty crazy game. Yeah, they wanted so, it to go ham. Do you guys think that's like a good philosophy for a fighting game? Yeah, I think so. I think yeah. I, I my philosophy for fighting games is overall make them crazier um fighting games it's weird because there's like this this false doctrine that people love they people love playing neutral people just want to play footsies all day and shoot hadokas <laughs> and that's just not true like there's a reason why street fighter 2 is very bare bones and every street fighter since then has added more you don't ever like a street fighter doesn't come out and they go we took all the options away like now you can do nothing but shoot hadokens again like, that's just not – like, games get more interesting when you add more things, you can do crazier things. And I think that what we – I think what fighting games should do is, like, make the games broken, crazy, and nutty. And then 
dial back what little you have to dial back, but then just everything that's not up to par, just buff them up to also be broken crazy. And so I'm, um, I pretty much agree that I do like the option of being able to do more things. I do not like zero to deaths in any game though, especially if they're easy to do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Cause that's just not conducive to a competitive environment in general. Cause then at that point, what's going to happen is you're going to have everyone picking the same characters. Uh, the same. Yeah, I don't like zero to deaths, but like, like in Dragon Ball Fighters, for example, if you, I mean, if you get, if you spark, you can kill somebody, but you have three characters. But that's, but that's different because you, you just said I use a resource, right? Yeah, yeah, but no. But what I'm saying is that in general, without spark, typically you kill a character in two to three combos, Th and that's and I, that's that's completely like that. understandable. Yeah, that's what I like. If you if you kill in two to three combos, I think that's a really. I don't good think there's anything spark. wrong with dying in two to three combos because that means you lost neutral that many times. Yeah. Uh, my thing is uh, the bayonetta smash forward. That's not fun for anybody, except the people who are obviously perfect at performing those inputs, and they can just bayonetta zero to death you. But like, yeah, zero to death because Smash Four became a bayonetta game. It it was no longer you couldn't play anybody else. Oh man, yeah. it did, especially at the end of its life, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. that was the end. Yeah. Of, the end of Smash Four is one of the worst endings to a Smash game ever. Mm. It was really anticlimactic. Yeah, and Banshee yeah, came out, and that was pretty much all you could play. It was like Bayonetta, Cloud. Really I was still schooling else. people with Dr. Mario, but you know. But if you went against a, a fucking Bayonetta, <laughs> it's just like, well, like, it's not even your fault. Like, what can you, like, you, lose, you lost. Yeah, no, she, <laughs> she was nutty. I also don't like, I, I love how her and, and Mithra, they're just like, we're, your air dodge is better. Like, you, you have a better oh, dodge. Oh, yeah, that is a thing. <laughs> like, yeah, they just gave, <laughs> hey, how was Mithra? I haven't. Mithra's She's, Pyra and Mithra are both really, really good. They're broken. A lot of people have them as a top tier, which is the highest tier. So I just find it funny that I got that game. I got Xenoblade Chronicles 2 for myself because I'm a Xenoblade Chronicles fan. And you then, are. And then Kenny stole my game and now he owns it. I no, no, oh, no. <laughs> but wait, the, usually that's, so Kenny, that's how it happened. Kenny has a little inkling of black in him because <laughs> one thing about black people is if you lend a black person something. For too long, you're gonna have to borrow it back. <laughs> <laughs> like that's how that shit works. Yo, borrowing back your own shit. <laughs> Not look, no, actually, because if if I wanted to play Xenoblade Chronicles 2, I'd have to be like, Kenny, can I borrow Xenoblade Chronicles 2? You know, even though it's my game. Nah, listen, I hold purchased. up, hold up. There's some shade going on here. Okay. <laughs> I borrowed Xenoblade Chronicles 2 from Ant and I First of all, he had the game for like a year and didn't play it. All right, I did play That's... it. I played it up until a point. I was gonna, I was gonna circle back to. And it. And then for a year, you didn't play it. And then I was, I was like, "Hey, man, can I borrow that? I'm gonna stream it." And then I streamed it. And then he never asked to borrow it back. He hasn't wanted to play it again. <laughs> like I said, I'm circling back. But you know, Kenny was like, "Nah, it's mine now." He hasn't gotten around to playing it yet. I'd let him have it back. Well, you know, I, I pretty much watched him stream it, so I was like, "Why am I playing this game now?" Right? <laughs> I plan to play Xenoblade. Uh, should I start with one? You should start. Yeah, with obviously. One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One. Okay. Yeah, I started with two just because at the time one wasn't out on the Switch yet, and I didn't feel like going through the process of like emulating it. Wait, what system did this come out on? The two Wii. came. Two came out on the Switch, but, but the, the first one came out. The original on the one Wii? came out on the Wii, and it wasn't even in America initially. It wasn't. It was just a Japanese game. Yeah, Xenoblade Chronicles Two was a Switch game. Xenoblade Chronicles One was a Wii game, and um, damn, that's taking it back. Yeah, but it was re remastered for the Switch. But okay, I played Xenoblade Chronicles Two first because I heard from many people that uh, it's not a continuation. Although there are yes. there are links between the two games, you can play them without one spoiling the other. Uh, but that said, you should play Xenoblade Chronicles One first. Because A, it's the first one, and B, I do think it's the better one. It, yeah, it is. Oh shit! One. Nice. I like it, it when is, something that came out prior is actually better than the sequel. Like yeah. Final Fantasy, it's a loose anthology. Mm -hmm. But but oh, yes, well. Xenoblade Chronicles I, is very very good. First one. I hope that they built. I hope that they port Xenoblade Chronicles X to the Switch. Yeah, because, Xenoblade X. I hope yeah. so. Yeah, and I know a lot a lot of people didn't play that game, but honestly, like it. It inspired, uh, it, it kind of like did it some crawling so that Breath of the Wild could paraglide. So you know what blew my mind the other day, the other day? Cause like I can wrap my mind around like pretty much anything visual. I'm like, okay, I have an idea how that was done, right? Yeah. But Kevin, uh, Kevin's my husband, uh, was he was streaming God of War and he had gotten to this part, God of War PS4. He, he got to this part where they were in the boat and they like were uh 
they were rowing through like a like a little like tunnel so it was mm -hmm. echoey right and they're like talking on the boat while this while he's doing that and like the audio changed so that like it was echoey while they were like in right. and i'm like yo this was like a scripted line so like how did how yeah I was just like how so, did they do that how is it like yeah. echoey just like at a that's a that's amazing also, I am currently playing God of War. I just started the new playthrough two days ago on the PS4, and it has been the fucking joy of my life. And I know exactly what you're talking about because while you're rowing, the son will randomly ask for a story. He'll just be yeah. like, "Yeah, yeah, do yeah." You yeah. Have a, he'll be like, "Do you have a story, Dad?" And he'll be like, "Sure, boy. One time there was a thief, and he'll just start talking. And you can you can stop rowing. You can just like sit in the water. You can keep rowing. You can go and like Anthony said in a tunnel." And the audio, depending on where you are, even if you go to an area that's close proximity to like icebergs, the audio changes for that too. Like there's yeah. areas, there's areas where like I guess the acoustics would naturally change in real life, so they change in the game. And that attention to detail is crazy to me. Yeah, because that that is like a pre-scripted, like pre-recorded line they put in the yes. game. Yes, like when he's speaking, just... I could be anywhere in the game when he's speaking. I could be anywhere in that river, the, the River Nine. But so, all, all all that to say, I I get your being perplexed with audio because I saw that me being like you know a master visual person, yeah. I was like, whoa, how did they do that? <laughs> yeah, that's really dude. That reminds me, I watched an interview recently of Sakurai and Harada. Harada is the the main lead on Tekken, and he's with Bandai Namco. Bandai Namco helped make uh, Smash Bros, uh, Smash Ultimate, Smash Four. But they were talking about something similar, and Harada asked Sakurai about horror games. And Sakurai was basically saying, like, horror games don't really affect him. And he doesn't, he can't really get scared or get into horror games or anything like that because he, when he sees something happening in a game, he sees what happens as a developer. So oh. he, gave, he gave an example like, let's say there's a scene where a million cockroaches covers a person. A lot of people will be grossed out, but Sakurai looks at that and he thinks about, like how much overtime they had to do to, to get all those cockroaches and like how much work the guy. So like when he sees horror scenes and he sees things in a video game, they don't affect them the way they might affect the intended audience. Cause he sees the work behind what he's looking at. Yeah. I feel that there've been so many, there've been so many times I'll be watching the show and I'm like, man, this was such a bad car comp. <laughs> like, oh, you can see like the green screen through her hair. That's awful. <laughs> and I'm just like, and in my head, I'm like, damn, that means that they ran out of budget. <laughs> damn. And most people don't even notice that. They'll just be like, I don't know. Yeah. They don't see that shit. So while we were filming the live reaction to Sora's reveal, I was going in a little bit about God of War because when I first bought the game in 2018. I put it on the hardest difficulty. Now, for people who are like, what the fuck? That's wild. Why would you do that? Because everyone knows the God of War games can be pretty rough on the highest difficulty. When I was a kid, I used to do that and beat the game, and you would unlock New Game Plus and all these other cool-ass things like Zeus's armor and shit like that, God of War armor. Um, just you would unlock cool things by beating the game on hardest difficulty. You were, you were rewarded for doing so. So I figured, okay, I'm going to do the same thing I used to do as a kid and put it on hardest difficulty. And the game is... I don't know if it's partially probably because I got older. I don't play games as much. The game is really fucking difficult. Like it is so difficult that it made it not fun for me on the hardest difficulty. So instead of enjoying the game, because God of War, apparently that, that PS4 exclusive is apparently one of the best games ever. Like it's won so many fucking awards. It won game of the year for 2018. It beat out like that amazing Spider-Man game that came out. That looked really cool. It beat out. Thank God. Fortnite. Mm -hmm. It was against a lot of good stuff like uh, Red Dead Redemption 2, which apparently is a, a really nice, nicely done game. So it was up against some good competition and it actually like beat out all those games. And it's even won a couple other awards here and there. So it's it's highly regarded. And because it's getting a sequel uh, called Ragnarok, a lot of people are talking about it again. So I was like, why the fuck is this God of War game that I did not enjoy after three years? It's just coming back up at all my mentions and like and on my timeline. And apparently it's because, you know, one, the game is a is really really good so i was like i have to figure out where the disconnect is for me and i realized it wasn't that the game was bad it's just that every single fight took me an over an hour to get past which made it not enjoyable because i would just get anxiety every time a herd of monsters would come like a swarm of enemies would come up and i'm like god damn it this is going to take me an hour to get past this part yeah and that's just not fun like that just like yes that could be fun to some people but for me it was just like holy shit i can't even focus on the story or anything else that's going on because 
as soon as it's time for a fight, you can't really get hit. And that's that's frustrating. It makes it extremely like I mean, it's one thing to be okay in Kingdom Hearts, right? <laughs> you beat all of the uh special bosses, and they pretty much can one shot you as well. But one, that's not how the regular Kingdom Hearts game goes. That's not the normal game, that's like a bonus. 13 yes. 14 super bosses at the end of the game you spent 30 50 60 hours getting acclimated with the game you have your own setup right. and by that point you probably have second chance and once more yes um so, so when you're doing this in god of war from the get-go every single fight being that ridiculous did not make it enjoyable for me again this is obviously just how i felt some people might be like oh well, i love the games on the hardest difficulty i like them too except Usually what I would do as a kid is I wouldn't just start the game off in God mode. I would play it normal, like normal mode. And then after I beat it in normal mode, I would go back and play it on hard mode because I want to get the controls down. I want to know all my combos and like what I'm going to be doing. Then I play it on hard mode and then I beat the game in hard mode. Then I unlock new game plus and I play it again. I was like a fucking fiend for God of War as a kid. So I would play them basically three playthroughs. And usually on my new game plus, I wouldn't actually go through the entire game because you get kind of bored when you're all powerful. Like there's only yeah. so only so much you're gonna do with like every enemy you can just fucking destroy them super easy you have infinite magic like you can spam spells and stuff like that you can't normally do in the game so it's like nothing is really difficult and you kind of get bored after a while but it's, it has that grand theft auto feel where yeah I'm, where grand theft auto is a party game yeah i'm god and i'm gonna go around killing everything i'm gonna commit mass murder no one can stop me and this is just kind of fun and then you get bored so but so yeah. a few things about that does <clears throat> like First of all, I think like there's actually a pretty like hmm. I want to say it's a steep difference, but like to like the to most players is probably just a like a, a a subtle difference between like the philosophy behind like a super boss like in Kingdom Hearts and setting something to the highest difficulty uh, in God of War. Um, and I noticed this particularly watching Kevin play God of War because when he started. He was like, what difficulty should I go on? And he was like, I think I'm going to go for like a balanced experience. Now, my head, right? Normal, because that's what balanced experience that's, is. Yeah, that's what normal that is. is always easy to me, right? And Same. I remember that when I played that game, I chose give me a challenge, right? Mm. And Which, so I told is him. That, that, is that the. That's, that's hard. It's not that's the hardest. Hard. It's yeah. hard. The hard and, one's called give me God of War. Yeah, and I knew I was in picking. And that you one. can't change the difficulty. That's the only one. If I wanted to, so right now I'm playing. Right, give me, right, right. Give me a balanced story. Yeah, and that's yeah. normal, and you can change it to easy or hard whenever you want. Right, right. And I think that one real quick. I think that's dumb. I think if if difficulty swapping mid playthrough is an option, then for example, if you pick Give Me God of War and you're like, "Fuck it, this is too hard." If you want a difficulty down, you sh you just shouldn't be able to difficulty back up. Yeah, like, I agree. I agree. You know I mean? like, okay, you I able, like that. I like that. You should a lot. Be able to, yeah, like you should be able to go down. Like basically, you shouldn't be able to put it on easy. Get to the end of the game, put it on the hardest difficulty. Like, look, friends. Like, look. I so beat that's this what I was hard. concerned. I was scared yeah. you were going to say that you should be able to switch regardless. Nah, you should like, be able to switch it not, down, and I then do you just can't switch it back up. So part of the reason why I had to stop playing it is because. I couldn't switch it. I had it on the hardest difficulty and I could not switch that shit. And you were so probably already like far enough in that you were like, I don't want to restart. Yo, there so. was, bro, there were some parts that I was like, I don't even feel like going through that again. Even though it's going to be easier, I just don't feel like going through it again. Yeah. Cause you would just, yeah. And that's why like you have to like come back around to doing it. So like, yeah. so, so he, so he was on give me a challenge yep. and he got to the part. It's like a part where you, you, you do a fight. There's like a lot of enemies. You do a fight, and then like there's like a brief, there's like a brief, uh, like a brief rest, and then you do another fight. Yep. Right. Like immediately after, but like the yep. bigger enemies, and he he was getting the first part, and then the second part he was getting frustrated. He was like, I'm putting it back down, right? And so he he put the difficulty back down, and then that fight became like way easier. And I was yeah. like. And I was like, I was a little disappointed because I was like, uh, and and then he fought something else like just maybe 10 minutes later that was one shotting him or two shotting him and yeah I was like and i was like they could have done a, they could have done a little bit better on the balancing so yeah. you think it's you think they did a, a pretty piss poor job at balancing in general I, I don't think that it was like a piss poor job i just think that it could have i think it could have been like tightened you know i think yeah. they could have like tightened up like the difficulty the difficulty standards there because like when i was playing kingdom hearts 
three last night, right? Even though I haven't played that game in like months. Yeah. And I'm like fighting all the super secret bosses and I get to Terra Nort and I'm like, oh, fuck. But, uh, you know, I'm like, okay, surprisingly, I remember how to play this game and I had almost beat him. And I was playing for maybe like 30, 40 minutes. And yeah. even though like I lost, 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 I still have the feeling like, oh, I could play that again. Like I could pick that up right now yes. and play it again. You yeah. Know? Like, I don't feel so defeated that I'm like, man, fuck you, yeah. Mark III. I'm never playing that again. Yeah, God of War did that to me. Like, that first playthrough, I mean, it's been three years. I literally put the game down for three years. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's a delicate balance to, to balancing. Uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 is a good example. You just mentioned it. Uh, I think Kingdom Hearts 3 Critical Mode is really fun. I think the Super Bosses in Critical Mode is really fun. I think the Pro Codes is the opposite of fun. Uh, I want. I did a, a play. Kenny did it anyway <laughs> with all of the pro codes on, and they're just not fun. What the pro codes do is your HP and MP slowly just decrease over time. Uh, if you use your MP, it automatically like your your MP takes double the time to recharge. Uh, you cannot use cure. Cure doesn't exist. You cannot use items. There's no Jesus. potions. Uh, you your stats are locked to level one stats. You don't get level ups. You only have 30 ability points to equip the abilities. It just yeah, this is not fun. I mean, this is fun oh, to some people, I'm sure. So, to, I just think that this is like all the like you're just really is, to the game. It just it takes away everything in the game that's fun. And yes, one of the things that's fraud, like it takes away form changes. So your keyblade forms. The keyblade forms are fucking fun. Like, yeah, they're strong, yeah, they make you better, but they're fun. They're part well, of you just the described game fun. you just described a very boring game. Yeah, you you, you just we, you turn the game in the Street Fighter 2. It's like I was playing Street Fighter 3. You turned it in Street what Fighter is wrong 2. With you in Street Fighter 2. You fucking attack this shit weekly now. I do, I do. That game sucks. But, Wait, um, did you did did you beat I don't want to I don't know if I'm like spoiling or not who the super secret boss is, but no, nah, everybody you, knows Yozo. Okay. No, I didn't did, did, I did haven't, you did I you beat done, him pro code? No, I haven't done that with pro codes yet. Uh, I okay. probably so then, will. so then you're you're still a scrub. Like you yeah, know, yeah, like I'm any, you know. I beat it on critical, but but no, nah. when when it comes out on Steam, I'm it's out on the Epic Game Store. I, I really want it on Steam. I don't I don't like the Epic Game Store, um. So I'm hoping Question. it comes out on Steam. Well, who? So I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I cut you off and everything. But who You're is good. the who is the hardest optional boss in Kingdom Hearts for you Yozer. guys? Yozer? Uh -huh. Yozer it, is it, by far the hardest. It is. It is. Boss. I haven't even fought him, and I agree. I I've like seen the gameplay, even seeing people that have uploaded like videos no damage kingdom key all the programs i saw a two minute fat world's fastest record yozura and i couldn't tell obviously watching even i mean you played you because you play kingdom hearts 3 right so like you i guess you can just kind of see that you can recognize even though the perfect the person is doing it perfectly why this person's hard because like Yozura is no fucking joke and i'm just kind of like beating all of the data org and like in the back of my head, I'm like, why am I putting myself in this misery so that I can go through more misery <laughs> when I fight Yozura? Like, it's fun. <laughs> I watched the fight. I was like, okay. I could tell a guy who did it had, he, I guess he has the world record. He has uh, really fast reflexes because he was doing some shot lock shit. That was yeah. like instant. Yeah. That shit is crack, man. It it, is, it's, yeah. it's so fun, though. Kingdom Hearts 3's battle system, the, the shot lock, air step, and just all the different things you can do are really fun and tight in that game. I, I like it a lot. I know, I know, as I said, Kingdom Hearts 2 is still my favorite, but I know there's people that like love KH2 and hate on all the other Kingdom Hearts games. Kingdom Hearts 3 is fucking solid. Like the, the secret boss in that game are really fun. The system is fun. But that said, Yozer is by far the hardest Kingdom Hearts boss. So it's like that Terra's armor thing or whatever. Yeah, lingering oh, yeah. will. I think, I pretty much think every i'll say 80 percent of the optional bosses in kingdom hearts 3 are harder than lingering will i okay. think yeah like the I data org in kingdom hearts 3 like Xion, uh you know xehanort xemnas etc they're all harder than lingering Damn, will, is one of them? yeah because like here's the hard. thing <laughs> yeah here's she's thing, hard right? as fuck he's like, hard as fuck and every one of them are harder than uh lingering will except maybe like luxer but uh okay yeah 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 I, I would agree with that because like 
I have beaten all of them. Like I've beaten every single like secret Kingdom Hearts boss, blah, blah, blah. and I've gotten to the Data Org in Kingdom Hearts three, and I still haven't beaten them all. That's they're they're actually it's pretty difficult. Yeah, and, I tried uh, to play around and just pick up the controller from Gary one day. Nah, there it, it there's a few not, of them. I fought uh, Young Xanord, I think is his name. Yeah, baby. Yeah, he's, he's whipped my ass. Also, they're, they're hard, Kingdom Hearts three doesn't have reflect. So by the very yeah. nature of not having reflect, it makes it harder than the cage yeah. two bosses. Oh, I, just, yeah, I think I did see that people were reflecting shit that the uh, the lingering will did. Yeah, reflect reflect makes that game a lot. It, once you realize how good reflect is, it trivializes it. It makes the game so much like it's crazy how much easier. The game is. <laughs> I'm on a no reflect mode of Kingdom Hearts two. <laughs> I'm doing yeah, a, yeah. No, no reflect, reflect run. No reflect run should be a category for it run. Should that's how good it is. Honestly, <laughs> because yeah, right, right now I'm just and, and all all I fought was was Terra Nort, and I'm just like, oh my god, like even recognizing the patterns. But but like. Back to the whole, like, com- I guess comparing it to the difficulty in God of War thing, like, there is a satisfaction in, even in losing in Kingdom Hearts, because you're, like, you know that you could have done better. Like, yeah. every time that I lost, I'm like, fuck, I knew how to, like, combat this combo. Like, yeah. I knew what I was supposed to do, but I didn't do it, and I got lazy or whatever. However yep. you rationalize it in your Conditioned head. Conditioned and, and stuff. Yeah. And That's like what? there's there's like a degree of that in God of War, but like I think once you go past give me a challenge, it's just like, damn, this if this thing could two shot me on normal, then like what the like it's one shotting me on hard? Like what yeah. is it doing I think, on like yeah. super hard? It's like like it stares at me and I'm dead. <laughs> I think yeah. one shot just shouldn't I think for most games, getting one shot it should not be a mechanic. It's I just not much fun. Agree. Like I think all of those types of games, Kingdom Hearts or God of War or whatever, Dark they, Souls. Should all, they should all have like a second chance once more type mechanic to some degree. Yeah. Um, getting one shot just isn't It's not fun. fun. It's just it's just punishing. Yeah. And that's that's the whole thing with like uh, with Dark Souls. You know, like everyone says that like Dark Souls is, is hard. But the first time I played it, I was just like, this isn't really hard. It's just really punishing. You know, like there's nothing hard about you walk down this hall and you know then like you a boulder drops on you yeah it's it's yes. just like it's just it's thing? just like punishing yeah, it might not be a boulder thing. but like you'll just be walking down the hall in dark souls and then something just kills you so now you know okay walk right up, walk yeah backwards. yeah 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 and that's not that like i still think dark souls it can be like a fun game i think that like dark souls 3 is probably like the best iteration of it but um but I, I I didn't look at that and think like oh man this game's really hard and I suck. I just looked at the game and I was like all right well that punished me because I existed in this moment. Yeah, so, cool. it all depends on like <laughs> the the refresh time, like how many load yeah. screens you got to go through. What you got to go because for example, yeah. Cuphead. Cuphead is punishingly hard. But when I play Cuphead, I don't ever get annoyed because as soon as you die, you're back into the fight. Like it's immediate. Like you die. It shows you a progress yeah, bar, yeah. how close you are to winning, and then you're me- like you don't got to go through a stage again. You don't go through a cutscene. You just you're back into the fight. The quicker, the quicker you can get back to the thing you lost to, the more punishing you can make the game without annoying the player. Right, like, because they just want to keep it trying. The more it sets you back, yeah. The more it sets you back, the more annoying it being punishing is because you're just True. like, what the fuck? Like I don't feel like spending 15 minutes just to get back to this fight. That's very true, actually. Uh, one of the good things about God of War, at the very least, is that when you do die, you just click restart from checkpoint, and you go right before you walked into the room that got you yanked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and that's what I, I would say. Like the the one thing that did really keep me going with Dark Souls is that like the boss fights were fun because the boss fights, you know, felt like that. They didn't. It, it felt punishing appropriately. Yeah, yeah. you know. And That's, and like it, it was kind of like in a Kingdom Hearts way where you're like you learn the patterns and you're like okay like you know they might swing their sword and you fucking get yeeted and then you fall off a cliff or whatever yeah but you're like okay I know how to avoid that next time Got yep it. <laughs> that said though real quick Kingdom Hearts wasn't always great before they added a skip cutscene option things were oh, bad I remember God. watching our friend Medina go through Kingdom Hearts one and he was fighting um the chameleon and Clayton. And oh, he died to Clayton like all 30 times. 
And I remember watching him have to rewatch the cutscene where Tarzan goes like, e, uh, ooh, uh, e. "Not Clayton, oh my God. <laughs> uh, uh, e. not Clayton." And he watched, he watched "Not Clayton" fucking three hundred times, yo. Yo, the early stages of like cinematic gaming, it was honestly Stockholm syndrome, like the the fact that we just let ourselves deal with that shit. That shit was fucking. Funny. That's hilarious. Uh, uh, I was going to say something. Oh, one another thing that I did like about Kingdom Hearts difficulty. So Gary was playing uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 with pro codes on and on the hardest difficulty. And he was on the Toy Story boss, which is like a big ass ship. Yeah. And he was having a really hard time beating it. I watched him fight it for probably 15 times before I said, hey, let me try. Mind you, I hadn't played Kingdom Hearts 3 in over a year uh, because I beat it. You know, the first two days it came out, pretty much never went back to it. So... It had been a while, but I grabbed the controller after watching him do what he was doing. And I was like, I'm pretty sure I could do this too and maybe even improve upon it. And I I immediately, he was like, holy shit. Like I grabbed the controller and I immediately took it to the last part. The last part is the realm kind of transforms where you fight it at and it becomes like this dark room and it does this part where you have to do a shot lock. Yep. I like bosses that escalate like that. Yes. Like that is such mm. a cool thing to me because what it did for me when Gary Gary had a hard time wrapping his mind around it at first, I said, why don't you break the fight down into segments? Like basically just in your head, tell yourself, I just need to get past part one, part one of the fight. And part one of the fight, you kind of beat up the top of the uh, ship and then it turns upside down and it kind of does a, a barrel roll to get away from you. Yep. And then it's going to do an attack. It, shoot, it charges a blast and you can either reflect it or you can just outright dodge it. But I basically like trivialized each phase of the fight because it's all like you said, it's patterns, but it's also punish game and things like that. So it's like yep. when he's when he does this, you can punish it here. And basically, the first time I picked up a controller after not having played Kingdom Hearts in like over a year, I was able to take it to the last part and then I died. Yeah, because I didn't know, were, I didn't know what to do. Yeah, but because you were able to watch Gary do it so many yes. times, you saw what to do. When you I was like, okay, right. this is what you like. Yeah, exactly. I was able to execute what he wasn't doing, and that's basically I just I just sectioned the fight. That's really in my head. All yeah. I did was section off. I was like, okay, you do this when he does this. You do this I, when he does this. That's what you do for the super bosses too. It's it's a bit harder because I re- the, when you go through the super bosses, basically. <clears throat> We'll do something, and you're like, what the fuck was that? Yeah. And you just die, and you're like, how? Like, that's so stupid. There's nothing yeah. I can do. Mm-hmm. At first, yeah, it's, yeah. A shock, it's a shock factor. Yeah, and then, like, a try or two later, you're like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> like, I'm certain that the young Xehanort doing his fucking crazy-ass move with that energy whip, like, once I figure out what to do for that situation, I never did, but once you figure out what to do for that situation, it's like, okay, that's not really problematic anymore. Yeah. Like, yeah, that yeah, is yeah. just, like... Like maybe it's as simple as pressing block. Like, oh, okay. Like that. That yeah, once you figure that. out that's what's lovely is it gives you it gives you space to experiment. It's a little frustrating because you're like, I gotta get up to that point again. Yeah. But yeah, but that, but it's fun. It's really fun. That's why yeah. when everybody was saying, like, everybody watching me do the super bosses were like, Hey man, like, why don't you take a break? Like you look like you're like I was having so much fun, as frustrated and angry as I was, like visibly. That I, it's hard to see how much fun I'm having because, like, I like that. I like the fact that I'm slowly it's figuring hard. it out. It's hard and... to see how much fun he's having because Kenny's cussing out the stream while he's, <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. like, fuck, man, fuck the bitch. <laughs> also, I, hate, I just hate when people who've never <laughs> attempted something try to tell you how easy it is. It's oh, so, it dude, gets yeah, so okay. angry. I was like, I was, I was playing last night and being reminded of, I don't know if it was like on YouTube or Facebook or something. Somebody was telling me how easy Kingdom Hearts was. And I was like, yeah, this is fucking easy. This <laughs> like, is so easy. <laughs> I'm like, this is an easy game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's easy on normal mode. Like every other uh, game. Yeah. I, shit like that annoys me. Like we talked about this before, but I love when like a complete scrub player tells a pro player why he lost. Like, this is what you should have did. It's like, oh yeah. it's also annoying so that's that's one thing right like i get annoyed by that but the other thing i get annoyed about is when you're watching something it's easier to judge it yes it's easier to say what you like and me and you talked about this kenny i believe where we said it's easier to know what you should have done when you've seen an option that didn't work already Yes, yeah, yeah, because you're you're like oh well obviously you should have did this but your brain is a state where you saw what failed Yes. So, you, so like your 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 thought process is already on what failed, and you're like, oh yeah, well I mean he should have did this. I can also vouch for when you're playing something because of the I guess the brain power it takes to play something right to to input commands, or if you're playing a card game to think out your moves, 
it's hard to see all the things that somebody who's simply spectating sees. Yes, because like they, they don't have to go through the matrix of pressure. Like they're yes, not like dealing with the other person pressing buttons in their fucking it, face. Exactly. So when Gary was fighting the Toy Story boss, he's focused on fighting the Toy Story boss. He's focused on his inputs. He's focused on living because he was on the pro code. So if he got hit once, when it shoots the missiles up in the air, if he gets hit by one missile, he dies. So yep. he's focused on not getting hit, focused on doing damage, focused on getting to the next level. Well, meanwhile, I'm just watching. So, of course, when he passed me the controller, I've watched him do it 15 times and fail. I know, like, okay, I didn't have to go through that. I can yep. just pick up the controller and just, like, eliminate so many options that he tried from yeah. the get-go. And that doesn't make you 3,000 times better than Gary. Yeah. That just means that you sat there and were able to watch and, like, absorb yes. the information. A spect I have a spectator's mindset going into it. And then what also was cool about it is, so what, what ended up happening was Gary would, like, you know what, after every three tries or so, like I'll pass the controller to you and then you'll try three times and we'll go back and forth and see who beats it first. And he ended up beating yeah. it first, which I was happy about because <laughs> I just happened to walk in on him playing Kingdom Hearts 3. So it'd yeah, been yeah. kind of ridiculous for me to pick up the controller on a pro codes boss on a hardest difficulty, one hit, constantly taking damage. Like it had that whole thing going on. I hate and it so like, much. And for me to just come in and be like, oh, I just beat this boss. Like that would have been wild. He even said, like, I was actually scared that you were going to beat it before me because I got it to the point where oh, I was like, he would have been so depressed. I got to the point where I was like a combo or two away. <laughs> he can say he he'll tell you, like, I was literally a combo or two away. I just didn't know what to do. It got to a point where I was like, I actually don't know what I'm doing here. Yeah, that you happened should. to me and me and Ant when we fought Lingering Will. Uh, uh, when we fought Lingering Will, our like first, like our first like one or two attempts, we got him down to like almost dead, and then. We continued yeah. to fight him for like six more hours or some shit because like he, yo he, you, you know you know where you like you, so you many more boss so many fight, tricks you get into a boss fight and you just got like that lucky run that's like the third yep. run like yep. the second or the third run yep. and it's like the lucky run and you're down to the last bar and you're like <laughs> yeah this is just easy and then you proceed to fight them for the rest of time yeah you're like <laughs> many you're like, a times what happened, has happened, to me. <laughs> what happened? I've had those ones. <laughs> What happened? Uh, you should have. So, you should have just. You should have just comboed out the. You should comboed out the boss, beat it, and then called Gary a scrub. You know, it's like that's true. Better. That's true. Just, that would have been so bad though. Good. I just that would have been real bad. It, and then been like, damn, pro code suck, and walked out. <laughs> <laughs> this shit's cake. <laughs> He just like uh, does it, and then he's like, "All right, what do we want for dinner?" And he like leaves. He doesn't yeah. even wait for Gary to answer. Just... Gary even admitted he was like. <laughs> When you first, your first run, he was like, I was scared. He was like, you were just like beating the shit out of it. And I, I was like, holy <laughs> fuck, is this guy really not going to get hit? Yeah. But there, there is, there is something to like when you've been doing something for a while and then coming back to it later and doing yes. it again, but you just like beat it. I can't I, tell you how many times like a part just like in a game just kicks my ass and I put it down for the night and then I come back and then the next day I'm like, wait, why was that hard? That happened uh, to Medina when we played Monster Hunter World. We were playing on a PS4. Uh, he came over to do like a LAN party with me. And one of the bosses or one of the monsters, I guess, is an Elder Dragon, Nergaganta. He's the flagship monster, Monster Hunter World. So the first day that Medina came over to play it with me, uh, I let him fight it on his own because he requested that. So he was fighting it and he was getting fucking bodied. And this went on for at least an hour of me just sitting there watching him lose. I didn't comment because I didn't want to annoy him. I was just kind of like watching. I was like, yep. Same thing I did with Gary. Like, I didn't say anything. I just kind of watched him play because people, it's kind of annoying to just have somebody be like, oh, do this or why don't you do this or, oh, that move keeps getting you. Like, I just mm. kind of don't say anything. I just watched. I didn't say a single thing. It's so annoying. And then after an hour went by, I said, yo, okay, let me tell you what you're like, where, wh what the issue is, like some of the things that you probably, and he's like, we talked about it. And then he was like, I'm actually going to come back to this tomorrow. And I'm just leaving my PS4 here or whatever. I'm gonna come back after work. He came back the next day. His first fucking play, he bodied Nergagante. I don't know what the fuck happened, but the first come he came back and he just he just beat it one try. Like I think it's like like this unconscious like saboteur syndrome or something. Yeah. Because also fear because when he first the first time he fought it, it's this gigantic fucking dragon and it's very intimidating. Like when you're first fighting something new and it's that big, and that, like it hits you one time and your health goes down by 70%. So yeah. you're, you, you have the fear of getting hit and you know what move keeps killing you and you have all these anxieties, right? But then after you like sleep on it and you think about it, you come back to one, you're not really scared of the monster. You're like, okay, it's just a part. First of all, it's just a game. So you come back to it, you're like, it's just a game, it's just a dragon. It's not that big of a deal. I've killed dragons before. And he came back to it and he just like fucking beat it. And I 
I was like, damn, that was uh, I was expecting for another hour session at least. Yeah, that's some good shit though. Yeah, that feels cool. good. That feels good. I like that. It's really cool. When I went back to uh, similar like when I went back like a couple years, not a couple years later, but Gary and Cairo had gone through Kingdom Hearts two. They like raced each other or whatever, and they did data org and stuff. And when they, I was like, oh, I'll boot up my file. I'll redo the data org and stuff too. And I beat Lingering Will on like my second try mm -hmm. after the last time I fought him. Like I beat him, and it took me like you know 10, 10 or so tries. Then when I booted the game up, I just beat him like on my second try, and like I beat him again and like beat him again. And I was like, oh, I can just farm him. <laughs> then he was your bitch. <laughs> Yeah. Like, and he has a really good drop. I forget what it is, but his drop's really good. I think it's like a strength up. I was like, I can just farm this guy. Yeah, that's true. Uh, we're going to switch over to listener letters real quick. Uh, <clears throat> if you guys want, you can send your questions or just anything you want us to read out loud on the podcast to I'm their podcast at gmail.com. And we may read it aloud on the show as long as it is something relatively nerd related or I guess really anything that you want us to ask. Just keep it appropriate, I guess. Um, yeah, you can ask whatever you want. We'll find a way yeah. to answer it. Just don't ask something crazy like, hey, Frazier, do you want to live in a time where... Anyway. Right. <laughs> <laughs> where was that going? I mean, I know where that was going. <laughs> I know where that was going, too, and I, I wasn't going is what it was. <laughs> I always tell people, when it comes to time travel, black people can't go too far back. No, we can only go in one direction. <laughs> yeah, we have to go forward. because We got to go to that. the future. And I don't even mean that far. Like, we can't even, like I don't even want to go to the 60s. Like, it's, like, it's that bad. Anyway, um, this is from one of our patrons, Josh Quest. So he said, hey, y'all, loving the podcast. The Kingdom Hearts episode is my favorite one y'all have done so far, and Anthony is now my favorite guest you've had on the show. Oh, shit. Damn. Something oh, many props, fuck, our, fuck our other guests. Like, just drag them. <laughs> fuck Tari and yeah. Tango and Ed nah. and Blair. Not fuck them. They are great. They're I mean, better than Ed in every way. Drag he them. just He knew what I knew, so thank you. <laughs> <Drag> <laughs> All right. He said, uh, something many fans like to talk about is worlds they want to see in the game, such as Treasure Planet or Atlantis. And I was curious what worlds you would want to see in future Kingdom Hearts games. First of all, Quest, by the way, I bet you didn't know this, but I we talked about how I used to be a magician. And so I actually knew that Ant was your favorite guest before you sent that letter. And that's why we brought him back so quickly. So you're welcome. Damn. That's, you know, I'll just let, I'll let it go. Yeah. So yes. worlds that I would like to see, and it's funny, uh, Kenny brought this up earlier, is Final Fantasy Worlds. I would fucking love Ooh. a Kingdom Hearts game with you go into Final Fantasy IX or you go into Final Fantasy VII or eight or ten. Like that would be really fucking cool. I don't know how they would incorporate it exactly. Like let's say you go to Xanarkand, not necessarily the entire world, but like you go to Xanarkand. Right. The only, you go, go ahead. The only problem with that is that you'll have like Disney worlds that are like, mm -hmm, oh, I tripped in the woods, help me. Yeah. And then you'll have like Final Fantasy X take down an entire theocracy because Good. religion is evil. <laughs> like, Good shit. Like, like Sora, the, there's no segue. <laughs> Sora and Midgar would be fucking cool to me. Like, that just seems and like the Heartless are uh, absorbing Mako and it's like empowering them and shit. Yeah. That would be cool. You know what I just realized? Would video game companies need to learn how to print money? Like they need to just hire me. I will give them all the ideas to print money. They should just make already Final Fantasy X remake, but it's in the Kingdom Hearts engine, and you you play a Sora. <laughs> Final Fantasy VII remake, but it's in the Kingdom Hearts engine. You, like, imagine going well, through kinda, the story. They kind of did that. Final yeah. Fantasy VII remake is basically just Kingdom Hearts. But, the fuck but imagine going through those games. Like, I always love like those um crossover things. Like, yeah, I would love to play. Like, there's a mod. There's like a hack or whatever. But you can play Ocarina of Time, but as Mario, and you can play. Super Mario 64, but as Zelda from Ocarina, or not Zelda, but as Zelda Ocarina. Of Time. <laughs> oh, oh, no, because I was I saying, really Zelda no, game. no, you just called Link Zelda. I was that just fucking Zelda happened. As we have the game. video and audio oh proof that you God. just called fucking Link Zelda. I knew that this just was going to happen. I was that talking about Ocarina of Time. Happened. Oh my God, sins. Shame. No, I can't even. I, was, I can't even throw shame. you a lifeline, Kenny. No, I was. Shame. I was literally talking. I was because I was comparing shame. Mario sixty four and Ocarina of Time. Shame. That's what I was comparing. Those game ends to the way the games play. <laughs> Fuck shame. both of y'all and everybody. I didn't even say anything. <laughs> shame. <laughs> Fuck all of y'all. All right. Richard just over here shaming shame. you, but I'm not even saying anything. Anyway, to answer Quest's question, what kind of world would I want in Kingdom Hearts? Yeah. 
and like i guess some disney some theme disney worlds or something uh actually um come back to me i gotta think about it yeah like what disney worlds have not been done i don't really i feel like the biggest ones were done in kingdom hearts one and two yeah like we got lion king we got toy story we got a beauty and a beast we got tarzan we got under like, under the sea or little mermaid we got uh what else like ratatouille is somewhat in there winnie the pooh is somewhat in there yeah, Big Hero Six was sick, and like the Big, fact that they did Big Hero Six was really cool. Yes, I didn't, I didn't like San Francisco though. But I, yeah, I, yeah, we I talked like about the, that world yeah. being kind of not really a world. Um, hmm. Shit, uh, I think I The think Incredibles like, oh, is DreamWorks or Disney? I don't even know. Is no, it Pixar? Incredibles is Pixar? <laughs> is Incredibles Pixar? I'm so yeah, I was but, scared to say Cars because I feel like Cars is also Pixar. Cars is Pixar. Cars is Pixar. I, mean, yeah. I couldn't remember if Incredibles was Pixar or DreamWorks. No, it's Pixar. But the thing Incredibles with the Incredibles would be world, Incredibles but the thing with dope. the Incredibles world is like, what is the Incredibles world, right? Like, we know the setting. Yeah, I mean, it's just like love, a, yeah, yeah. love it's the just characters. Our world. Yeah, it's just but our like, world. what's yeah. the world? Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. That's kind of probably the reason why Big Hero Six isn't that great because the setting is just regular ass life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where like somebody knows how to make thing. some nice technology, but like. The world itself is just a city. Like it's an actual yeah, true. city. Um, that is true. Let me see. Um, be... I, I mean, I don't really know if it would fit as a world, but one one of my favorite um, Disney movies is Oliver and Company. That movie is amazing. New York City. Kenny wants. Yeah, to go I know. To I know that's also just another city, but I love. But maybe Sora gets really no. small. Sora gets really small, like the size of a cat or a dog, and he hangs out with the dog, and they're fucking singing. I That's think for that it would work though, because it will be like dedicated New York City, dedicated to the style of Oliver and Company. Like I think it could work. I think that could work. I guess my fear is, I uh, not really fear, but like I think that they really did do all the big Disney movies. I'm I'm oh, really Jungle trying to think. Book. Jungle Book. Jungle would be Book could have been a good one. Yeah, okay, man. that can be huge, especially because they did a remake to that movie. Jungle Book would be cool. That's a hu- I mean, that's a huge iconic movie as well. They redid it recently with Angelina Jolie as one of the characters and stuff. It's like the voice actor. That's a really big one. That could be a world. I guess Atlantis could have been one. Yeah, he's did mention um, Atlantis and Treasure or something. You uh, know, Treasure fuck Planet. it. Let's do Cars. Let's do Cars. Oh shit! Fuck what it. if Cars had a soul? And then you know they say let's like, let's just make yeah. them, make Sora a car. The one movie that's like what if black people had a soul. Yo, Cars one was a pretty decent movie. All right. I haven't I seen know. it in forever. But uh, cars cars could be interesting, I guess. But it, I don't think cars would be that great of a world. It'd be a great mini game world or something. Like not a full world where I fight heartless. I don't, but <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, well, to, to to answer the original question to the to the listener, honestly, what I would want is I want a good Atlantica world because. The Little mm. Mermaid is my favorite Disney movie, and I want a world that is actually good. Because Kingdom Hearts One, it was like, okay, I guess yeah. it's like it's like you're flying with with a tail fin. Yeah, they could make a really good Atlantic world. Now. They could, especially now. Kingdom Hearts with the Two, technology now. Yeah, Kingdom Hearts Two was like not no. I, it was a rhythm game. I was disappointed. Kingdom yeah. Hearts Three. I kind of got what I wanted in Pirates of the Caribbean because the yeah. underwater combat was actually really fun. Yeah. Like the whole underwater thing was really fun. If that were a whole world and they like dedicated that to a whole world and it was Atlantica and there was Ariel, I would have been like, this is great. That's yeah. that's honestly, that's the answer to your question. So that's I agree my with Anthony, your and I'm, I'm going to piggyback off that. If they do do an underwater world where the entire world, you are underwater, you really don't go on land. Uh, I want... I, don't, I want them to stop doing this fucking thing where you're limited on your move set. You notice yeah, how yeah. even in, even in Kingdom Hearts three, a game that is very very new, when you do go underwater, your move set is like super shortened. All the things that you have on your drop down menu that you have equipped the sword, they don't matter underwater. Right, you can only right. do like five attacks, and you have like that thing where he spins the keyblade and like a, a fucking vortex of water happens. Yeah, I, I hate I hate that. And the same thing is with Simba. Like when you used to play on Pride Rock. And you're the line version. You put your move set is limited. You have like this really quick combo, and that's it. All of the yeah, flashy stuff that you can do, all your finishers go away for the most part. It's really, it kind of takes me out of the whole like I'm Sora. One thing that's and, cool about the uh, the underwater part in Caribbean and KH3, even though the move set is shortened, they made it so that um, 
I like the did with the spells. Like yes, yo, all that the was spells so good. function the differently. Way the it's Blizzard really works. Like, Blizzard, yeah, Blizzard like Blizzard like, like way... shot out like tendrils. Yes, and, like that and, was like, sick. Thundaga became like Thundaga shot essentially. Yeah, that was and basically like it meant because like if it were Atlantica, then like they would have all been sea creatures, right? Yeah. So they could have just still had all of their moves just interpreted as yeah, interpreted. Yes. And that would have been dope. Yeah, instead of shortening the move list, in, just in, you know, interpret just change it. it. Yeah, just change yeah, it. Just and that would be that thing. would be cool as fuck. Well. Like, don't make my combat experience worse. Because honestly, of most of Sora's combat, especially in the air, is all flippy and dippy anyway. So most mm-hmm. of that can work underwater anyway. That's what I'm you thinking. Can, yeah. Like, uh, it, and speaking of the spells changing for underwater, the fucking spells change. Period for Kingdom Hearts three. Like when you, I guess, surf on Blizzard is that's such a cool thing to me. Oh yeah, yeah, that yeah. was great. Yeah, yeah, when you can check Ryan Radio yeah. the Blizzard. Yeah, mm-hmm. also all of the all the Keyblade forms can change the way the spell interacts a little bit, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um Yeah, off the top of my head, I'm having trouble other than Jungle Book, I'm having trouble thinking of any like really good Disney worlds other than the ones you've already like Treasure Planet would be amazing. I would Atlantis have to Google. Would be Let me just do a yeah, Treasure Planet is kind of the only one that I could think of that would be Um The Rescuers would be cool. Yeah. yeah the Rescuers would be cool. cool. Our scores could be cool. The Great Mouse Detective. Great Mouse Detective, yeah. Um, mm. What I would love, though, similar to what Ant said, like is how Fantasia Ant- up? Like, is that a thing? That's already that's a world. Dream Drop Distance. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that that would have been my go-to answer, but that's a world, and it's actually a pretty. I like that world. The way they did that world was really cool. But to sort of pick you off what Ant said, something I think would be really cool, and this would even be cool for like remakes. I understand that. King, all every Kingdom Hearts game has already been re-released 300 times and they've gotten our money a million times. But if they did like a Kingdom Hearts 1 remake or a Kingdom Hearts 2 re- like a real remake and they like fully fleshed out these worlds more. Like imagine you go to Olympus Coliseum and the Coliseum, the stands are actually packed with people. Like I would love to see the games, re- like the worlds we've already seen, but remade into a more expansive world. Um that's kind of what I wanted Olympus because the thing is, is Kingdom Hearts 3's Olympus Coliseum was kind of everything that I wanted, but without the things that I also wanted. Yes, like, it's everything it, that it's everything that you wanted them to give you, but then they took away the one the other thing that you liked. You're like, wait, what yeah, the fuck? yeah. Like I did enjoy the underworld in Kingdom Hearts 2. I was like, this is a nice like expansion. If they had kept that and then they like kept the Coliseum, especially in Kingdom Hearts 2, the Coliseum's destroyed. It would have been nice to see it like you know built up again and like here's tournaments here like yeah and it could have just been like introduced after the whole conflict you know but like I, it would have been how dope would it have been in kingdom hearts 3 that you've got the underworld and then you've got thebes i think it is and then you yeah. got mount olympus like that yep. how cool is that that'd right? have been really dope what they no, do imagine like yeah go ahead apparently finding nemo yeah, Finding Nemo is mm-hmm. Pixar, I think. Or maybe it's Disney. I don't know. It's, well, I, it's under the 27 best Disney movies of all time list. Yeah, everybody um, loves that movie. That's Finding Nemo. Movie. People oh. love that shit. Pocahontas. <laughs> you can have Pocahontas. That's also <laughs> and then And then you go there, and then they're looking at Sora, and they're like, you white devil. And then oh, like, Sora's shit. like confused. That would be great. <laughs> Man, and then, like, and then and then they try to like cook Donald for Thanksgiving dinner or some shit. Wow, <laughs> that'd be crazy. But uh, I was gonna say, imagine like the Coliseum is brought back in Cage Three, and then fucking you do one of the secret things, and you just see like Sephiroth walk in. It's like, doom, doom, oh, doom. well, you know what? Uh, I forgot about this, but uh, now that they fucking own Marvel. They could just do anything. Yeah, and Star like, Wars, right? They can, yeah, they can just do and like this is on so on the list is fucking Avengers Avengers, like the Avengers series of 27 best Disney movies. And I forgot that Disney did make these movies, basically. So Disney funded those movies. Funded all right, so, yeah, yeah, however yeah, it works. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, Disney is like overseer of all of these fucking other worlds. Like Star Wars will obviously be insane. A lightsaber key keyblade. Yeah, Star Wars that, would be sick. Star Wars would fit thematically, you know? It does Star fit Wars would actually well. just like and this is something that okay, I guess Kingdom Hearts 1 kind of set the bar where it had a really high ceiling and a really low floor as far as like including the Disney worlds in the plot. 
mm-hmm. right? Like, because you've got worlds like Neverland, right? Where even though what was happening in Neverland didn't really, like, wasn't really like, conducive to the plot of Kingdom Hearts, it was, like, you can't explain the plot of Kingdom Hearts 1 without what happened in Neverland, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, and the then, Disney worlds are very thoroughly threaded to Kingdom Hearts 1. Yeah, and, like, right. like Jafar talking to Maleficent. And, the Princesses you know, of Heart. Yeah, yeah, just like just like stuff like that. I mean, fuck Wonderland, but anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, then, <laughs> but then like Kingdom Hearts 2 kind of does the exact opposite where you can pretty much play the beginning of the game, fuck all the Disney worlds, play the middle of the game where you have the Thousand Heartless battle, fuck all the Disney worlds on a revisit, and then come <laughs> back to the end yeah. where you're in Twilight Town. And then yeah, the story... The story for Kingdom Hearts 2, the Disney World is literally just gameplay. Like anything yep, that happens filler. there in terms of cutscenes is a road. Yeah, it's it all it's kind of feel like that. Like you're just going through the process, you're going through the motions. Yeah. The filler yeah. adventures of, of Sora, Donald, and Goofy yeah. on their way to defeat the Organort. Um so I would I would say just real quick to put a stamp on the question, I would definitely I think my first pick would be Jungle Jungle Book, my top pick. Mm. Not including the things he already mentioned in his letter, but Jungle Book, I think, would be mine. Is Star Wars fucking easily if that is ever going to be a thing? Because a lightsaber keyblade and Sora using the Force is going to be wild. Damn, yeah, so I guess be be a be, oh, yes, shit. Jedi's. I'm not ready for Jedi Sora at all. I don't think anyone oh, is. Damn. No, they would be. He he already flips around like Yoda. So yes, uh, people are like, oh, this. it's going to be crazy the shit that Sora can pull off. Wonder what that keyblade would look like. Mm. Well, I think it'll be a kingdom key, but the energy will just be green or blue, and it will literally just be it'll be a kingdom key, but it'll be energy like energized. And the hilt, the hilt of it will be a lightsaber, but it'll have a keychain on it. Very simple design, but very cool at the same time because it'll be like glowing with energy. That'd I'm looking sick. at some some things now. You, on... Yeah, you're thinking about it, right, Kenny? Like that shit would be. Nah, yeah, it'd be sick. A lightsaber keyblade would be dope as fuck. I can't even like I can't hate on that. I cannot hate on that. A lightsaber keyblade would be so cool. So there's one quick thing after the listener letter I want to touch on. Uh, I don't think Go it'll ahead. take too long. Yeah, we're pretty much we're close. We're we're coming in on uh two hours, so we're about to wrap up anyway. That's fine. Um. All right. Well, quick transition. Uh, I wanted to touch on this a little bit earlier, but um, this. You know, we hit a lot of things. But I wanted to ask if you guys saw the trailer for Fire and Blood or whatever, the new Game of House? Thrones thing. Oh, okay. I was going to talk about this, but I wasn't oh, sure we were to talk about it this episode. I, we can we can touch on it briefly. Yeah, so, okay. I did watch it before this podcast. House of the Dragon is what it's called. Yeah. And did you see that? Don't... Nope, I'm watching trailer. it now. Uh, in general, for me, trailers don't really um, do it for me like they used to when I was younger. I mm-hmm. think this is a product of living with Medina for a little while when we were roommates. But in general, uh, trailers just they either spoil too much. At least maybe it's new trailers. Trailers tend to spoil too much or they tend to just give you nothing. Like it'll just be you'll just see a dragon's eye open. Right. Like that's a trailer yeah. these days, too. You know what I mean? Or it'll be a dragon burning down a fucking city. And it's like, well, that's just too much. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this one. It had characters. It seemed like you know the type of Game of Thrones drama. I saw the throne room, which that's fucking insane, <laughs> right? Like to see two because this. So they they tell you that it takes place two hundred years before Game of Thrones. Yep. Which is which is really cool. So it's a prequel. We've been asking for a prequel. A, a lot, at least I have. Uh, because I, I me feel, too. Because me, sequel yeah. sequel will be sequel in my head would be awful, only because there's no source material for sequel. But sequel a, would be so bad. <laughs> we already saw how it ended, and the ending was no source material, basically. So, prequel though, there's a. I read the books. There's a lot, a lot to work with when it comes. Dude, to there's so only, much lore. There's so much lore for that. Not only yes. the books themselves. He wrote two whole just lore books. He Fire and Blood One and Fire and Blood Two are like seven hundred page books that is just the lore of the world. Yes, which is insane. So the idea of a prequel sits very well with me already. Uh, A lot of people are excited for this. Obviously, you got the people who are just like, no, they did such a bad job with the ending. But the thing is, apparently, George R. R. Martin is involved in this. Uh, There's also, like we said, there is source material. So it's not like they're just pulling shit out of their ass. 
And this is a little further back than I was expecting. Like I, I was expecting it to go back to what was it called? Robert's Rebellion. So when Ned Stark and Robert Baratheon, like that will be the mm-hmm. ending of the entire series. But basically the series would end with them taking killing the Mad King. Jamie Lannister stabs the Mad King and Robert Baratheon and Ned Stark. Uh, well, Ned Stark is the one who walks in on Jamie killing the king. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be great. It'd be it great kinda, to get that. Assignment. It will kind of end with like that. And maybe you can do like a little time skip at the end of that prequel where uh, Cersei and Jamie kill John Aaron, the hand of the king, which starts mm-hmm. Game of Thrones. Like that is the ending of the series. That would be fucking epic as hell. But they're going far back, like way far back. Yeah, so it's like a Genesis prequel, right? Like the almost not quite Genesis because there's the the age of the first men, like the yeah, it's two hundred well, years ago. When I say when I say Genesis prequel, I mean like Genesis of what becomes Westeros because okay. the Targaryens you know, being the rule. Dude, I yeah, love. There's a line the, in the, the trailer. Targaryen conquest is like what makes Westeros Westeros. Yes, dude. There's a line in the trailer where Aegon someone the says. Conqueror. He says, dreams didn't make us kings, dragons did. I Yo, was like, oh, shit. That, so that's how it ends. That line for me is, I knew immediately, I was like, okay, I'm down. I'm down. Take my money. Take my fucking time every Sunday at 10 p.m. Like, I'm fucking in. You don't, you're like, you don't have to do much for me. I'm so easy. I'm such a fucking easy whore. That line was like, hot. Be my but John, please. Also, seeing the trail, I was like, "Oh, they got black people now. Look at that." Yes, I guess, we got black yeah, I guess yeah, the future deleted them. No, <laughs> but uh, no. The, so the trailer, I, I kind of agree with what you were saying, though, Fraser. So the trailer overall, like I watched the whole trailer, was nothing. Like I feel like, yes. like what you were saying. I watched the trailer, and it was just action. It was just action sequences, like, but nothing happened in the trailer. Yes, like, nothing really was, happened to where. There was nothing to latch on to, really. It was just like action. Yes. Which except which for like, like some cool quotes. The quotes and whoever's speaking, I think they said it was Ramsey Bolton. Like yeah. the voice of the person who's speaking is Ramsey Bolton. Also, mm. I know the guy who is playing the the guy Targaryen. I don't know if he's going. I don't know who he's going to be. I have no idea. But the guy who's playing the main male Targaryen is from The Crown. Like I know I know him from The Crown. He plays the queen's husband. Prince Philip in seasons one and two. And he is a very interesting actor. He has very cool mannerism. So I'm interested interested to see how well he does because he was phenomenal in the crown, but everybody in the crown was fucking amazing as at acting. Like that's just that show sweeps awards every year. So I'm interested to see him as a Targaryen. He looked he looked the role. Like he fucking looked the role. Uh we're gonna get everything back. We're gonna get incest, we're gonna get dragons, <laughs> we're gonna get murder. <laughs> Why was incest on the first? Yeah, like what? because that's what we fucking want. We're gonna get everything. We're gonna incest. We're gonna get dragons. We're Listen, get- <laughs> there is a formula that made Game of Thrones the cult classic that it is, and part of that formula is people like to shy away from is fucking incest. Episode one is fucking incest. Like that that's, is literally the the yeah. start of Game of Thrones. Is that so? Even the fucking scene where he was rubbing on. There was one part where uh. The Khaleesi was then Dan- Danny's brother was rubbing on her boob at one point. And he was like, I let all 40,000 of his men and their horses. And, it, yeah, and he was, was kind of looking at her in a way that was a little disturbing. But then you realize like, OK, even though that's his sister for the Targaryens, that's normal. Like that is yeah. just no- that is normal Targaryen behavior. Actually, I'm not, for the Targaryens, that was tame. You know, yeah. like yeah, very honest, tame. Bro. They were like, why didn't you take her right there? Like, <laughs> word, right? Like, like, light her, light her box up. His ancestors are looking down on him and shit. But fact, Ant, and you you no. just lost the trailer, Ant. What do you? Um, hmm. Uh, trailers should be like movies where, like, or hmm, I should elaborate that statement. Trailers should be like movies that are a part of like a series or a trilogy, whatever, on a standalone basis. If the person watching doesn't know anything about Game of Thrones, A Song of Ice and Fire, they should be able to watch the trailer and know what it was about. The only reason I knew what that was about is because I was like I had the context of Game of Thrones. So yeah. it wasn't like a great trailer. Most of the trailer was, I agree, like a nothing trailer. But it still got me excited because like I know about Game of Thrones and this it looks like it's yeah, going to be yeah. pretty good. If you know about Game of Thrones, but... you're like, oh, shit, cool. Look, the Iron Throne before they... Fix the swords, but like if you're if you don't know about it, you're like, why do they have all those swords around that chair? That's dumb. Because yeah, of course it's dumb. 
But yeah. yeah, fire. I keep wanting to call it Fire and Blood. They mentioned Fire and Blood in the trailer, and I think this God show, kings, Fire and Blood. Those are the things that he says. Yeah, I think this. I think this show is going to be. I'm assuming it's going to take a lot of the material from the books, Fire and Blood. So, I'm hoping so. It looks. Good. I just. I'm watching it again as you guys were talking, and the trailer does look good. It looks like Game of Thrones. Like Kenny. Like yeah. Kenny. Like Anthony said. If you have the background of Game of Thrones already, when you're watching it, it just looks like another season of Game of Thrones with different people that you've never seen before. It just looks right. like it has the exact feel, the atmosphere. It's all there. So if you like Game of Thrones, you will probably like this. Um, and yep. but like, it's, if you don't like, the trailer should be enthralling enough to like a new viewer because you know there is someone out there that doesn't know anything about Game of Thrones. Yeah, Yo, you know, a lot of you know what I just thought of. What do you guys think? The I I hope the opening sequence is as fire as the opening of the Game of Thrones. Like the, it's probably going to be better. It's probably like, going to be way. I don't know what it builds the, Oh my god! Because Game, Game of Thrones, Thrones opening is so good. Of every it's, a, it's, a, it's an it's iconic. Honestly, it is. Like, it's good, but it's also weird. And I, and here's the thing: Game of Thrones opening is good to me now, but I'm gonna be honest. When I first watched it, I didn't know what I was getting into because it was like a zombie show. No, no, I mean, I mean, my bad. I mean, like the opening cinematic, like the dun dun dun. dun yeah, the title oh. sequence. I'm talking about the title sequence. Oh, oh, yeah, that's yeah, gonna my, be good. That's I'm gonna talking, be so good. Just because, like, the title sequence of Game of Thrones oh. is so sick. How like the oh. si the map builds and shit. So it's yeah. so like, sick. One of the most iconic fucking openings of all time is Game of Thrones. Like that. Yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. opening song is it's so, so iconic. Yeah, it's so fucking tough. I thought you meant literally episode one scene. Yeah, yeah, one, my bad. And action. I thought that that's what you meant. Yeah, no, my bad. But that I'm saying, I hope the title sequence. Uh, maybe that's a weird thing to get excited for, but I'm I'm kind of no, no, it's, not, it's, it's not, not weird. It's not, weird. It's not, it's not weird. weird at all. Yeah, it's not. not it's weird. actually not weird at all. Like when especially us game, talking about Kingdom Hearts games in the intro. Right. Like, spent, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> probably in the last two podcasts, if you combine the time, we probably spent an hour just talking about Kingdom Hearts openings and just things like that. So yeah, yeah. it's easy to say like openings, even like when I think about Yu-Gi-Oh, like y'all mooch. Like you know yeah, that yeah. whole people that like that's iconic. That's part of so yes, it, I'm hyped for whatever they're gonna do with the opening. They have to they have to deliver. They have to they have to. And they got the fucking budget, so they definitely they, have the budget. They do HBO's got budget for like HBO is they're all HBO, top of the world. You know, HBO has always had the budget too. Like if yeah, you think about yeah. back in the day, like when we were kids, you used to have to pay for HBO. And I remember at my household, we didn't have HBO money. So like a, like okay. HBO was always about that bag Our like always. Quick, you still have to pay for HBO <laughs> technically. Right. <laughs> so just real quick. Firstly, like, HBO is free now, and that's great. But <laughs> when I was a child, <laughs> so okay, whole you know, box office HBO... cost that bread. The only reason I have HBO right now at this very moment is because when you have an AT and T plan. AT&T Unlimited plan, uh, you you just get HBO Max for free. So for me, HBO is a free thing, but I realize right. that not not everyone has that. Yeah, right. right. Well, I'm, they, I'm hoping that. The, oh, go ahead, Kenny. My bad. I was going to say, and they always produce like not every HBO show I like, but in general, HBO shows have a very high standard of quality. Like, they they're do very well. Done. I mean, The Sopranos is HBO, right? Yeah. The Look, Wire. I uh, I was watching I was watching Titans. Season one, season two, season one. Is that the Teen rough. Titan show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Season I one, heard season one rough. Was I heard season one was rough. It was rough. Season two got better, you know? I like, heard season I, three is the Stones, though. See, season season two's writing was weird because, like, it was like it would kind of ramp up to be good writing, and then it got to the season finale, and I was like, what is this writing? This is a completely different show. Right. And then season three. I heard that was nuts. Immediate budget. I heard you episode one. Immediately. Scene one. It. Yo, I was like, damn, Starfire got a good looking wig now. She's like out here looking no. nice. Like, I was Starfire's, Starfire's sure. wig in season one. I haven't season seen the show yet. Was... But half the reason I haven't seen the show is because when the show wig. came out, Starfire's wig is it's of that horrible. Season, season one, like, I, I was can't like, watch that. I was like, who? Like, I was like, damn, they must not have had like a black person on, on like hair and makeup. Cause like they would have been like, not at all. This wig is not it. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> it's not you can it. tell when representation but, is not in the room. But then, like mm -hmm. see, season two, you know, they got her like a, they got her like a, like a straight wig. I was like, okay, she looks nice now. She's right, starting to look nice. Lace front. Somebody laid it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, this looks. But like season three, she's got like curly hair again, but it looks nice. And it I'm looks like, good. yeah. 
I was it like, doesn't look yeah, like you can just okay. snatch a wig off her head. Like, <laughs> yes. You know, you know, like the ancient drudge <laughs> wigs and stuff they used to have, like the fucking the settlers, the colonizer oh, wigs. Shit. You know the one. I know Dang. exactly which one. It has no part. It's so, 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 <laughs> so yeah, so HBO's definitely got that budget because they were like, Oh, we got this show now. Bet. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, oh, wait, did Titans start off as a different company? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It started uh no. it wasn't the CW, but it's like a CW equivalent. It was like DC oh, so, so, three something. So HBO got Titans on season three. Yeah. Well, no, I think oh, they got it like at the that, end of season two or something like that. Like they acquired that it. Makes so much fucking sense. Yeah, Wait, are you like, this? Yeah, yeah. It was. It was like who owned it? It was like DC something. Oh, because um, everyone has been saying season three is insane, and I didn't know that HBO took over for like that part. You, that you can immediately so, tell. I've here's, been hearing the same. That makes so much more sense. Here's how you could tell, right? Because like the first two seasons, they would do this thing to like the color. When like they were doing the final the final color grading of the show, where it would just be blue, everything was blue. San Francisco was so heavily blue. You could just see it, and I know that probably gets on your fucking nerves. And then like season season three episode one, me and Kevin were like, "Oh shit, look, there's red. Oh shit, yellow." <laughs> oh, yeah, not y'all looking at primary <laughs> colors and being excited. <laughs> not y'all being excited over just regular ass primary colors. We were like, "Wow, they introduced green. Oh my <laughs> god, that's so nice." I'm done. Damn. That's actually interesting. I I heard what same as Fraser. I heard that the like season one's blah, season two's okay, season three's amazing. But I didn't have much interest in watching it even then. Me, but yeah. now knowing that the reason why season three is amazing is because <laughs> HBO bought it, I kind of want to watch it all. Me now. too, dog. I kind of want to watch it. It wasn't, it wasn't as bad as I – because, like, I, Kevin <laughs> just put it on just to have it on in the background. And then we both, like, actually started watching it. And there's, like, some episodes where there's, like, there's some writing here. And you're like, yeah. okay. And, like, season two, it just – it gets a little – it gets better. So I would say the finale was dumb. There was a death that we were just like, what the fuck was that? And apparently everyone on the internet's like, that was nah. <laughs> but it, it's it's actually it's pretty decent. It's pretty decent. I was surprised because I didn't get really to watch it. This weekend, I'm watching Squid Game. This yes, weekend. I was about to yeah, say, please yeah. don't go a single new show without watching Squid Game because we yeah. have to get the Squid Game on. I think We've I'm watching to. Squid Game on Friday, I want to say. Dog, we got to get the Squid Game episode out. And it's only 10 like, episodes, Y'all got to right? talk nine. about it before Halloween. Nine. Yeah, yeah. Yes. No. Why? What's, wait, is Stranger Things coming back out? No, no. I'm, it's just like like after Halloween, uh, Squid Game's not. I just, I don't want to do not it. Be talk, yeah, you know how yeah. Quick, yeah, microwave yeah, yeah. culture we are in. Yeah, we can watch. I'm, I'm going to be, I think, I think I'll be done Squid Game by Sunday. Like, we could even say the Sunday episode might be Squid Game. You uh, can get, you can get it done in like a night. Even because, if you can't, yeah. even if you can't get it done um, in time for Sunday, I mean, next Wednesday is also fine. So don't feel like you have to finish all nine episodes. Like, yeah, okay, you once must. you start it, I I couldn't stop watching it when I start. Like when I when I finished episode one, because I feel like episode one's really long. It set, does a lot of setup, but once you get through episode one, I couldn't stop watching it at that point. I was like, I have to see for what like after red light green light. I just have to see more. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I made it through episode one of Wandavision, so I'll be all right. Exactly. Damn. Agatha all along. Wanda, all right. Listen, WandaVision's sick, but episode one, you're like, what am I watching? But we, yeah, we, I would keep, have to we're, we keep vortexing forward. I would, we got it. This podcast is so fun. I want to keep talking about more shit. I know. Um, and as with every guest, but you've been on two times in a row. Obviously, I'd love to have you back on. Um, but yeah. Uh, real quick, before we go, let me just give a shout out to all of our patrons over at Patreon. That's right. Let me get this fucking list out. Get that list out. Sora is finally here. Elsa <laughs> lets it go, and Waluigi invites himself. Then the game would be complete. It's true. It's true. Everyone Elsa would be happy. Except oh, for those real damn quick. Also, uh, we have a listener letter from Leon, but he sent it to us on Patreon. So we're going to read that out on the next episode. Leon, we'll get we'll get to that. Sounds good. So over at Patreon, we have Connie, Austin, uh, Leon, Quest, Garen, Xavier, Hylian, Sarah, TCG Automotive, which you can find on Higher Car, and we have Silver Chronic. Thank you guys for being members of our Patreon, where you enjoy exclusive access to video versions of all of our podcasts, as well as extra episodes each month. And you know we're going to be bringing more stuff to the Patreon as well, but. You know, we could play Yu-Gi-Oh! together. And whatever other perks you want to take advantage of. Yep. 
You can vote on episodes. If you want us to talk about a topic, we'll do, literally do an episode on it, which is how the Kingdom Hearts episode came to be in the first place. Is one of our patrons said, hey, can you guys do Kingdom Hearts? And we said, absolutely. Yeah. A Kingdom Hearts episode was going to happen at one point, but he helped it happen faster. He helped it happen at the perfect fucking timing. Can That's I just true. Say, That's that true. That is Yo, actually... timing. Yes. Like, dog, divine timing. <clears throat> so thank you, whoever. I forget who exactly it was. I think but... we can look. It was on Discord. I think it was. I want to say it was Quest. But uh, he knew. Be wrong. Are you from the future? Did you know? Oh, Quest. Also yeah, what's Quest? Me... Yeah, Quest also challenged me. Uh, February twenty sixteen. Oh, no, that's okay. me. That's me. He challenged me. Oh shit! Did he really? He challenged me. I told him straight up. I was like, I want you to know, Fraser's in my corner. Well, All this right? is good because I got third place at a YCS in February twenty sixteen, and we, you can use my list and you yeah. guys can play. And I'll, I'll, I'll want to like... play Fraser's deck. He was like, How familiar are you with Pendulum rules? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> perfect so we got some things to look forward to so we will be doing a patreon exclusive uh duel with one of our patrons and kenny and i will be going up up against them we kind of like you know i am there versus whoever so this will be fun this will be what happens one. what happens if you lose do you have to like give up your firstborn uh yes that's fine because i don't know if i'll ever have one but okay. uh they also get bragging rights and it'll also be uploaded to YouTube, so it's it's immortalized. So if you fucking cream me or cream Kenny, then it, that shit's there forever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Don't get creamed, guys. Don't get. I'm nerds. Win record's going to be like fifty-fifty because of me. <laughs> I'm not trying to hear that, Kenny. Don't let him fool you guys. He's not terrible. Like, don't let him act like he doesn't know a single thing. Ah, uh, he's trying to pull the Cairo. Uh, guys, I haven't played this game in a long time. Go yep. easy on me. Yep. Yo, it depends on the rule on set. Me. It does, though, because the rule set If you have me good. Link Summoning, I'm like, oh. <laughs> if you have me Link Summoning, I'm also like, oh. All right, guys, do the things that make you happy. Do the things that make me happy. Of course. <laughs> All right, bye. <laughs> <laughs>